All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Smoker Show, season two, episode number 10, the last episode for 2019. And good evening, Mr. Phil Bussardo. Hello, Mr. Dimitri Agrafiotis. 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 So what's going on, Phil? Everything okay? Yeah, man. Uh, everything is okay. You know, other than the, the consistent uh, stream of bad news, uh, you, you know, that we get from uh, vaping. You know, and I would like to say to all of the uh, the fine folks watching the show tonight, um, and I think this show is going to be really no different. I, I think we've, we've kind of gotten away a little bit, a little bit, you know, from what the, the smoker show was to be and i think we're going to get back to that a little bit in in 2020 would you not agree dimitri yeah i mean listen as much as we 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 try to stay on track there's always stuff happening especially with with false media and false attacks and different bands and all that and i think i think people need to be aware i mean we don't want to turn this into an advocacy show by by, by any means but i think that even new vapors need to be aware of what's happening but most importantly it's to debunk the false accusations against the industry and the bad science that that is being manipulated to support these bad bans and restrictions. Right. And with that, I, I agree with you, because that was absolutely one of the charters of the of the smoker show was to debunk myths. Right. Um, and, you know, when we first started the show, we debunked the usual myths that you always hear, like, oh, you know, there's antifreeze and vaping, all that other nonsense. Um, but now it's like it's the whole show has become uh, debunking myths and talking about the the vaping related deaths, you know, in the United yeah. States and everything. Yeah. But um, it, it was just it was just a matter of a necessity, I guess. It was more than anything else. It, it, yeah, more than anything else. I agree with you. Um, but, you know, I, I think one of my New Year's Eve resolutions and I really look to the um, the people who watch the show. Uh, you know, every year I think like, how, how do we reach more smokers? How do we talk to more smokers? How do we get more smokers to, uh, to, to watch the show? One of the reasons why we did this show was to talk to more smokers. That's mm -hmm. why we call it the smoker show, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the show is absolutely not intended to get people hooked on nicotine that, that don't smoke right. and don't vape. Right. right. You're going to see no, no puff bars here. Yeah, no. Right. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, this show has always been designed to talk to the adult smoker right. and let them know if they have tried everything else and they have failed to uh, to, to quit. Uh, you should think about vaping and you should still think about vaping no matter what you hear in the news. OK, because we're here to tell you otherwise. And and, 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 and to be fair, for the last, you know, three, four weeks, uh, I mean, we've given out over 20 kits to smokers, whether it's been through the Smoker Show, or through Facebook or through the different stuff that we do. Couple of comments already from the chat, Mr. Brasardi. Thank you. A year ago, you sent me a box of gear uh, to us, and I can happily say the Mister is now a non-smoker. Uh, Skynet, which is we we sent the gem pen to them uh, uh, on the last show, if you remember. Skynet says uh, thank you, Phil uh, and Demi. Um, his brother loves the gem pen. Uh, so I mean, <clears throat> no matter what the government does, hopefully, hopefully we'll still be around here to try to help some people. And I think. 
the same thing applies for the Smoga show, as in, if you haven't seen the two videos that we shot in France at Gaia Trans and Alpha Liquid, I highly suggest you go to youtube.com slash Pibusardo and watch the two, the vape shop video and then the tour of the factory where we discussed a lot of, lot of the topics with the owners and some of the management team. But in the video for the vape shop, you notice I say this over and over and over again. It's word of mouth. So we can get one, pe one person to quit smoking. Hopefully, he'll tell somebody else, hey, listen, I watched these two guys. One is better looking than the other one, Dimitri, than Phil. But they have a show on YouTube called The Smoker Show. Go check it out. Maybe you'll learn about vaping. Maybe they'll send you a kit. Maybe you can get to try it, and maybe we'll be able to improve your life. And I think that we've maintained that no matter what the last three or four episodes have been with all the bombardment of, of, of the attacks that we've gotten against vaping. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know... If, if we can even give one kit away, if we can convert, uh, you know, one person per show, if we can convert one person with all the shows, I, I think that's that's why we're doing it. Um, and, and, you know, if you guys have feedback uh, for us, good, bad, if there's something yeah. that you want to see from the show, let us know. Okay, let us know. I mean, this show is extremely interactive. Uh, that's why we're looking at the, uh, the YouTube chat right now. That's why... Uh, we have the call in lines. Uh, you have access to our email addresses. Yeah. Um, and when we get good feedback, uh, when, when we hear a success story, we want to publish you. And if you go to tasteyourjuice.com, there's that Smoker Show link. It's everything Smoker Show. It's all the shows. It's all the materials that we've used in the show. Uh, and it's your feedback, too. So like, like this recent one that I just got from, uh, from Mr. Liam, it says, uh, hi, Phil. I would just like to thank you and Dimitri. I have been a dual user of smoking and vaping for a couple of years, been managing a vape shop for just over a year, but with the help and advice from the smoker show, I have dusted off one of my old MTL tanks uh, just over a week ago and stuck in a higher Nick strength, Nick juice. And I have not been dual using ever since. Fantastic. Keep up the good work. The smoker show is a gr is great for people who are smoking and people that are in between dual users too. Welcome yeah. to the show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's great. And there's, there's, there's like, if I go back here, there's, t this is the smoker show feedback and it just goes on and on. Yeah, and on. Yeah. You know, this um, is, these are success stories. And if you have great. one, send it to us. Right. Uh, there's this another one. You know what this tells me, Dimitri, what? this tells me the show's working. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, another comment from John Foster. I found you here on, on YouTube. Was looking into vaping and came across your channel. Been smoking 32 years. Bought a blue and it was disgusting. But now they're a vapor, so that's fantastic. Outlaw Vapors has asked 15 times when the Aries 2 is going to be available. Uh, I we are uh, we just Field just got the final version in his hands two days ago, uh, and he's going to be shooting the videos for the introduction on how to use it. So. That means that it's very, very close. We're a yeah. couple of weeks, maybe maybe three yeah. weeks at the at the latest. So I hate to say because every time I say it gets delayed, and then and then people blame me. Yeah, the only the only reason that I'm not going to call this the final final version is because for some reason the etching isn't on the bell mm -hmm. uh, like it's supposed to be. But you can see some of the engraving now uh, that we have on the base. Yeah, I that's good. Hold right on, let me put you on the big uh, on the big camera. There we go. So that looks sexy. I don't know. I mean, I, I I really like that. I like how it matches up the A a little bit too. You know, it's like the the it engraving. Does. Yeah, it does. And it also, I mean, not only for looks, because that's something that I posted on the platform group, um, but it also makes sense from you know working with the tank too, because now you have like a whole bunch. It's so it's it's etching, but it also works great as a grip to open up the bottom of the tank. Too. And welcome to everybody that came from the Vape and Fagan show. We certainly appreciate the Fangmeister for sending over you guys over here. Uh, the Zenith is what got me to successfully quit smoking. Well, congratulations to you, U B I K, Ubik. Congratulations to you, uh, and we're very, very happy to hear that. Before we get started any further, of course, Phil, we have to thank our wonderful sponsors. Of course we do, and those sponsors include Inikin, uh, the folks that we work with to make our platform products. Thank you so much for supporting us through the years. Joytech, uh, they still make a lot of great mouth-to-lung products and other products, too, uh, to help you quit smoking. Uh, our friends over there at Juno, that little pod system that works so well. Not all salt, right? Kind of a, a hybrid liquid. Mm -hmm. Nice throat hit. Um, do we do we we don't 
don't have a coupon code for Juno yet. Do we, we don't. We should get one. We John's get been one. so busy trying to advocate for the industry that he has had time really to. Uh, we do have a brand new um, coupon do. code, though, for we you do. from Five Pawns. Uh, you guys asked and we delivered. Smoke Free 15 is going to get you 15% off of your Five Pawns order over there at www.fivepawns.com. Well, I like how you say that. It's like, you like that, don't you? Yeah, like Philly Mays. But wait, there's more. There's more. Yeah. Look at the, look, our friends at Lunar Rover, too. If you use the coupon code Smokers Show over on the Lunar Rover website, you're going to get 15% off your order over there. Wow. www.lunarrover.com. What a bargain. <laughs> uh, by the way, I have to say both of those websites, uh, Five Ponds and Lunar Rover, uh, great MTL and high nick liquids. It's one of the reasons why we have them as sponsors here as well on the Smoker Show. So we certainly appreciate that. Pete Ouellette, trying to get my son off the cigarettes, needs some help. Give us a little bit more information, Pete, and we'll give you some more help. Right? How old we'll is he? How much does he smoke? We'll Pete. give you a lot of help, Pete. All you yeah. gotta do is just give us some more information. Just don't drop a line like that. And magically, you cannot get people to quit smoking with just that. Okay? <laughs> if you're going to a vape shop and you say, I'm just trying to get my son to quit cigarettes, you're not gonna get the help. And you're never gonna be successful to help him quit unless you ask the right questions. How much does he smoke? How old is he? How dependent he is on nicotine? You know, what work does he do? You need to have all those questions in order to find what is matched up perfectly with him. And I highly, if you're a vape shop owner watching this video, I highly suggest that you go watch uh, the Ultimate Vape Shop Experience on Phil's channel. I got to look. Most of the comments that we got there are really good. <laughs> that just put me in the Christmas mood right there. Um, but uh, but um, uh, go watch that. I got a little criticism on that. They're like, oh, well, it's too medicine only. It's too like, whatever. I, I guarantee you, if vape shops were open, operating like that back in 2015, we'd have 15 million vapors in the United States, and the government wouldn't be able to do anything. That's just my opinion, whether you like it or not, whether you want to call me a douchebag or whatever, I don't care. I'm just saying, try to at least watch the video and get some of the positive from it and implement it into your vape shop before it's too late. I mean, the, you know, the things here in the United States are bad. Folks, they're bad. You know, we're, we're not giving up. We're still fighting every day. I'm fighting in my state in Tennessee. Uh, but just this past you know, week, December the 20th, uh, President Trump signed into law um, that you have to be uh, the age of 21 now to buy tobacco products. And included in that, of course, is vapor products. Now, I'm not going to sit here and rant about you know, my opinion on this. Everybody knows I'm against T21. Everybody knows I am against any age restrictions when it comes to harm reduction. Okay. Any, any, it, it's not just vaping, okay? Imagine, imagine if seatbelts were only going to be worn by people 21 and over. Imagine if condoms were only passed out to people that are 21 and over. Imagine if methadone was only given in clinics to people 21 and over. This is the same thing with vaping. The minute that they do vaping at 21 years of age, to me, to me, what that signifies is the government absolutely thinks that vaping is just as bad as smoking. And we've kind of raised our hands up and said, we agree. Okay? We agree. And T21 to me is so unfair. It's unfair. It's unfair feel that <laughs> a girl can go to California at the age of 18 and shoot a porn star a porn film with five guys and when she's done she can't have a vape or a cigarette. This well, is not the America. This is not the America that that I it came to love, and this is not the America that I grew up in. First of all, uh, I thank God that that girl can go to your California. <laughs> it's, and, it's true. It's true. You do have a good point. You do have a good I point. I do, right? Um, but and here's the other thing with T21 that really, really bothers me, okay? And I've been, I've been tweeting this out a lot. Um, okay, so you want T21. You got it. You got T21. So with T21 in place, why the flavor bands? Yeah. Why do we need flavor bans if we have T21 in place? Right. The only thing that flavor bans are now going to affect based on T21 is adults. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. No sense. Why no sense do we still need flavor bans if we have T21? Yeah. And, and, to, and to be fair, T21 is not going to do anything, honestly. It's not going to change anything. Most of the kids get their stuff from social media. You can go to Snapchat right now and buy weed, crack, vapes, cigarettes, whatever you want to. Um, it, 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 I think that, that that gap between you know 18 to 17 in high school, yeah, maybe, maybe it'll cut down 
No, it's not. I'm, I'm completely just bullshitting you. It's not going to change anything. So all this does is just open up the door for more restrictions, especially a year from now. Let's say we, ha- we don't have a flavor ban, but a year from now, the data comes out and shows, oh, nothing's changed. Kids are still vaping. So what are we going to do? Let's just remove flavors. Let's just remove all the vaping products except one or two products that are just incomplete. It just opens up the door for more restrictions. So whatever my feelings on it is, it's irrelevant because it's been signed into law. It's federal law now. Okay, Donald Trump signed into federal law. And um, I wish at least vapor products had some kind of an exemption, meaning that, okay, so we passed it federally 21, but let the states decide. Kind of like we do with weed, right? I mean, weed is federally illegal, but you see that the states are selling it. At least give the vapor products because they are less harmful. The minute that you don't distinguish the two, that means that you've lost, meaning us. We lost. The government believes that they're... Uh, that they're or they, they make it appear as they're both just as harmful. So if you're 18 to 21, I'm sorry, you're shit out of luck. You can't vape. And if you're smoking, you're already breaking the law. So <laughs> might as well break the law with vapor products as well. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Listen, AZ advocate, don't worry. My blood pressure is uh, much better than that last rant yeah. that I did. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to worry about yeah. that. By the way, did everybody get enough Fagan? Uh, I did this in honor of Fagan sending people... Uh, over to the show. Can we just go full screen here? Yeah, absolutely. Sure Let me get a little bit more. Fagan. I just want to make sure everybody got enough Fagan. You, did you get enough uh, Fagan playing the guitar right there? I I right? can never get enough of Fagan naked playing the guitar. Really, I mean yeah. that should be my screensaver on my phone. Really, really. I just you know I just wished when we were at you know a hotel room together that you yeah. had a guitar. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Block your underwear. All right. So don't uh, you like me dancing naked without a guitar? By the way, uh, the telephone lines are open two one five three eight three five seven and five two. Two one five three eight three five seven five two. Press one when you hear the British lady speaking, and that will show up on my switchboard, and I'll be able to bring you in. Let me just address a couple of questions, and then we can get started with the content that we have. By the prepared. way, I, I think that video from Fagan is actually more harmful than vaping. Yes, sure, I, sure, I sure, believe sure. that it is. You have to is. be thirty to watch that video, not twenty one. <laughs> right? Your eyes I are know. gonna bleed after you get done. No, I'm just kidding. My God. All right, Jan P. asks, can I mix Nick's salts and e-liquid in the same tank or pod? No bad chemical reaction or anything. Nope, nope, no problem. Whether nicotine is nicotine, whether it's salt nicotine or not, you can mix it. You can do whatever you want to. There's not gonna be a bad chemical reaction. Actually. Salt nicotine is regular nicotine mixed with benzoic, or not benzoic, some, some acids that make it uh, salt Processed nicotine. Processed with benzoic acid. Correct, correct. Uh, or other types of uh, salt nicotine. Uh, New Wave Dave 169. People start out would be breaking out an old 2011 Enjoy on New Year's Eve to celebrate my seven year of anniversary. Congratulations, New Wave Dave, to you and to many more. Uh, Ronnie Mitchell, I'm trying to get my wife and son to get off cigarettes and onto vapey. They're watching with me right now. Cool, Ronnie. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, there was one more question here about the potent coals. What is up with the Inic and potent coils? Co- Did you uh, say coals? coils. The potent coals? <laughs> yeah. They just don't last at all. If you've seen the potent coils, they're very, very small. So the liquid's going to play a huge role. Guys, the potent coils are tiny, tiny. Keep it. There's not a lot of cotton inside there. There's not a lot of coil, right? Uh, can you pull that coil out? Just kind of, Can you just pull one coil out to show so everybody understands what I'm talking about? A, a coal? A, a coal. coal. I've experienced this as well, too. If your liquid is is uh heavy salt if you're if your liquid is heavy with sweeteners and all that these coils are not going to last very at all really uh simply because the coil is very very small and it gunks up really really quick so try to use cleaner liquids uh less flavored liquids in the in the potent coils and you're going to get a longer uh longer life i'm going to do a size comparison yes yes do that do that uh, but, but anyway, yeah, I, 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 I use the potting like traveling or going outside. I don't use it on a daily basis, but look at that. Look how tiny the coil is. So you have so to think is, about the, yeah. This is a Zenith coil, right? right? That's a potent coil. So you have to think about this a little bit with an engineering head, even though I'm not, but Phil has taught me. The smaller the coil is, there's less surface area and the quicker it's going to gunk up, especially if the liquids are, I'm not going to call them dirty, but I'm going to call them if they have high sugar, if they have high salt and stuff like that. Salt, because of the benzoic acid, just gunks it up a little bit quicker. So keep that in mind when you're using these small pod systems or these small coil systems as well, too. So I hope you're, that answers it's your not only It's not only surface area. It's also, don't forget, the, the amount of filler or cotton that you have in there is is substantially Less. decreased. Correct, right? correct. So, you know, cotton gets dirty after a while. Yes. yes. Uh, and, and you have much less cotton in this coil uh, to, to get dirty. And when things get dirty, they get gunked up and, and they go bad on you. Yeah. 
Jerry, hey guys, happy holidays. My sister-in-law just had a baby. She stopped smoking the whole pregnancy. She wants to start smoking again, but told me she'll try vaping. Any suggestions on nicotine strength uh, and device? Well, again, a lot of questions. You know, I mean, a lot of a lot of uh, not enough questions to from for us to answer you. To me personally, the easier the better. The Inigans Lie Tube. I absolutely love this. I absolutely love this. And we, now we have a smaller version with a disposable coil as well, too. But the Inican slide with the, the, the slide tube, no numbers, no nothing. You put the tank on top. She feels it on top very, very easy. Presses the button, and she vapes. And I think that that's what most people want when they're trying yeah. to transition. 12, hey, milligram, uh, 12 milligram tobacco liquid, I think, is good to start off with the Inican slide with a 1.2 ohm coil. And it's very inexpensive as well, too. Like 30 bucks, you can get people to start vaping. In my opinion, hey. you can't go wrong. Hey, GBV, uh, first of all, are you are you close with your sister-in-law? Do, do you live close? And, and where are you located? Let us know in the chat, please. Oh, gr- great. So you asked her a question. It's going to take like five minutes to answer. Great job. Good job. They no, can it's call. Okay. Well, we're just not going to wait for her to answer. Oh, okay, Don't okay. Listen. How do you know it's a her? It's a Jerry. Her name is Jerry. Oh, oh it could be. I'm sorry. It could be. Okay. GBV, Jerry. All right. Jerry, <laughs> him, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, uh, actually, Jennifer, we're going to we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, salt nicotine in the, uh, the show yes. tonight. Yes, yes. Uh, some yes. comments from the uh, scientists. Yes. The scientists. Uh, yes, I've had actually uh, three shots of espresso now because I had two cappuccinos Dimitri says I drink them too fast, and I did have an espresso, and I'm going to go for another one. So, so I'm going to be bing, 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 bouncing off the walls. So if salts and e-liquid work better for me, I need to buy $1,000 worth of coils. I think, Jan, um, no. I think what you should do is maybe find a different delivery system, meaning find a, a coil that will last a little bit longer, maybe a bigger coil. I'm not saying for the Zenith. You can buy the Spire Nautilus or any other MTL coil that's bigger than these small devices. Nothing against these small devices, but it's the puff pattern that you have to think about, Jan, okay? When we pick up this device, the puff pattern that we use it, we use it daily, 300, 400 puffs, right? The pod systems, if you put them through that much stress, the coils are not going to be able to keep up. So you're going to end up buying more coils. Yeah, there's just no doubt about it. So the way that I use the potent, you know, I have it loaded up here with, uh, I, I, I tried this lemon ice from Alpha Liquid over there, 11 milligram. How is it? Well, this was, it's fine. It's really good. Uh, so what I do is I, I, when I go out with a motorcycle, I put it, you know, over my my uh, my neck and I, and I take it out with me when I go out to dinner, when I go out the house and I want something quick, I'll just hang it from my neck and I'll use it. And when I get back, I pick up my big system. Nothing against salts. If that's what's keeping you off cigarettes, just try to find a different delivery method. So, you know, we're hearing, you know, the comments and I'm trying to I'm trying to do something here as as I speak. We, you know, we're hearing the comments about the coil and the coil doesn't last very long. And, yeah. I, you know. Uh, let's just say, for example, that the coil only lasted you a day. Yeah. All right. So the coils, um, I'm just quoting a uh, site here real quick. Element Vape, they're $9.95 for a package of five. Divide that by five. That comes out to $1.99 a coil or two per bucks. day. Per day. Even if you had to change your coil per day yeah. and you smoked a pack of cigarettes, it's still kind of a big saving. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, you, granted, most people are going to get more than than a day out of their coil. You know, w- with the Zenith coils, we recommend rule of thumb a sure. week, change your coil. All right. Sure. sure. Um, but I think we forget. I think we forget as vapors how much it costs us to smoke. Right. right. You know, one I of the agree. things, one of the, the, the emails that I get all the time, and typically this is just from people that are looking for a free product. And, and I'm not a fan of that. Um, hashtag team free shit. Hashtag. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when people say, ah, you know, I want to buy so I just can't afford it. I can't afford it. How did you afford your cigarettes? Yeah, yeah. That- How did you afford that pack of cigarettes every day? Yeah. Because, you know, in some places, cigarettes are $10 a pack. We'll say anywhere from 7 to $10 a pack, right? Yeah. If you don't smoke for three days, you typically have enough money to go out and buy yourself something. Sure. And, right? and, and, so, and if you watch the vape shop video, a uh, good comment from uh, R B M K I I. I I mean, take a take a wild swing of that. That's gotta be uh, R B Mark II. It's R M B. But um, in the in the vape shop video that we did, uh, if you saw where we went to the computer and they punched in all the numbers. Uh, you saw just a traumatic difference between vaping and smoking, even you know with with some heavier 
vaping equipment and buying two devices a year and stuff like that, you'll see a tremendous price difference as far as spending what you're spending on vape if you want to. I mean, you can go buy a new device every week. Obviously, it's not going to be cheaper. And some people do fall into that, and that's perfectly fine if you want to buy a new device every week. But I, I actually loved that they did that at the vape shop. Yeah, I loved that that was part of the process, right? Because if you're not, if you're being, you're being re, re, what's the word? Reinforced. You're being reinforced yeah. by the questions that they're asking. You're being reinforced by uh, the support that they're giving, the follow up that they're doing. You're being reinforced by the fact that you're doing that carbon monoxide test, right? And yeah. going back and having that test done over and over and over again. Yeah. And then, boom, they reinforce you with the price point too and the money that you're saving because i understand that like the initial layout right can be like ah eh, you know people aren't used to the you know a pack of cigarettes isn't 30 bucks right? i get that right yeah but when you look at it and you calculate it out over time right you know for those of us who are not att attracted to you know uh shiny new things shiny right? titus shiny titus for those of us who just don't want to smoke anymore and you get one device and it's working for you and you just buy your consumables, your coils or your building materials and your e-liquid, right? Vaping is extremely cheap compared to smoking. Even if you have to change your coil every day. Absolutely correct. Um, I that. Uh, let me answer a question really quick. What tank comes with a new Chroma? The new Chroma R with a replaceable 18650 battery comes in two versions. One with the Slide 4ML tank for MTL and with the Ajax tank for... Uh, direct lung uh, vaping it comes in two versions <laughs> and the device by itself as well too so hey, you okay so gbv jerry a um okay let me let me jot your name down because i did this the last time and i like totally forgot to take everybody's name down okay get a hold of me gbv on uh, facebook gbv is that who we were talking to gbv jerry a. gbv jerry a facebook.com slash phil busardo uh, I think Phil is going to send you some starter kits for your uh, sister-in-law. I you am. Get, you don't want. I've got. And the, you're gonna uh, get that, brownie points for, for that. I got too. that uh, limited. Yeah, you get brownie points. Sister-in-law, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I got the uh, uh, several of those limited edition Christmas versions of the uh, the Inican slide tube. Uh, you can't go wrong. I'm telling you, you can't go wrong with that. I, I, I in Greece, they're selling fantastic at my stores. Uh, it's just a great starter kit. It's very, very inexpensive, and it looks damn good as well too. Let me tell you something. That right I'll there. Send you, I'll send Look you. Um, I'll send you some uh, lunar rover too. Look at that. Look how sexy that. It's just a great starter kit, man. Very, very easy to use. You just put the tank on top, hit the button, and you vape. There's nothing else you can do. Uh, slide from the top to fill it, and it's done. It's ready to go. Just, it's just, uh, just absolutely sexy in my opinion. RB. I was right. It was. It's Mark II, right? Mark II. I don't know what the RB stands for <laughs> because when I see MKII, I always think Techniques SL 1200 MKII. Yeah, I remember that too. Two. When I bartended, that was the the greatest uh, turntable in yes. the history of humankind. Yes, I remember that. Steve, you met Steve, my friend, the DJ in Greece. Huh? My friend Steve, the DJ in Greece. You met him. We went out to dinner with him. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, what yeah, he no. had. The MK twos. Uh, that's what he was working well, with back course, in the day, like, two thousand one. Well, every every <laughs> good real DJ started out. All right, those. let's get on with the show. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, let's just uh, give a little uh, preface on what we what we are going to be seeing here. Okay. So in, in these videos that you're going to say uh, that, that you're going to see, uh, we were in France and we were lucky enough uh, while we were visiting with Alpha E Liquid and Gaia Trends to meet Sebastian. Sebastian is a Ph.D. Sebastian, uh, d uh, say his last name, Phil. D d d anyway, we'll see it in the video. <laughs> yeah, see, see it in the video. <laughs> He's a Ph.D., a true Ph.D. OK, I have not like our surgeon general. He's a true Ph.D. Uh, physician scientist that that studies vaping. He is part of a group called CryVape uh, that was formed in France to continuously do studies uh, and work with the government uh, in order to push vaping as a less harmful alternative to cigarettes. And and we were very very fortunate that it was there. And he took a couple hours to sit down. Of course, all these have been condensed to smaller videos, uh, but he took a couple hours and we had a really really long conversation. On, on, on his thoughts of what's going on here in the United States. And then we brought up the questions that we would normally bring on a smoker show if we had a guest on, right? Some of the questions that you're accustomed to. What do you think about salt nicks? Where would you tell a smoker? But also we got a little bit of a more of an insight why some people would uh, support vaping in the scientific world and some, why some people would not support uh, vaping. And, and we did this more so so you can be educated 
on this subject as well too because we get frustrated i get frustrated when i see a Staten glance or a or a or a jerome adams uh bash vaping and come after vaping and say that it's not good and it's not safe and people should not be using it i get very very upset and i always want to ask why i mean i really can't do nothing about it you know <laughs> all i can do is tweet the president to fire them but you know how that's going uh, but this is why we're doing it. We did this to to be able to get some some uh, some answers, right, Phil? Absolutely. And you know, he he really did take a whole lot of time out of his schedule to talk to us. Yeah. Uh, I think we got we got some uh, really good questions. Uh, I'll just just be forewarned: very very thick French accent. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the clips, and then we'll just have a little conversation uh, on on what we heard uh, after the clip plays. Okay. We're ready. Let's do it. All right. Hello, guys. I'm with uh, Sebastian Wu, which is uh, the head of the uh, Innovative and Research Center on Vape. Uh, yes, called Cravap. He's uh, the head of that uh, research center, which is uh, receiving uh, funds from government. So he, to have his independence. And uh, he's uh, initiated several processes uh, you know, through Europe uh, with different institutions, uh, universities, labs, uh, uh, yes, uh, to, uh, to start studies on, on, on vaping. So you yeah. will talk about it. Uh, there, 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 there are several studies, clinical studies, phases one, two, and three. The first is on cells. Um, we create um, a three D uh, model cells to uh, understand the mechanism of uh, absorption and assimilation of um, the aerosol produced by uh, a cigarette. Um, the aim is to understand how uh, the nicotine um, go through uh, between this uh, this barrier, how uh, this nicotine is transformed, and also it's uh, also to prove the toxicity or or not of uh, several flavors. Okay. Uh, phase two is more on. Uh, animals models uh, for example uh, uh, a pig is, is a man <laughs> without harm it's important to um, to uh, understand the mechanism of uh, assimilation on on a, a pig because we can transform extrapolate all these results on the the for human, for human okay so it's a very good uh, clinic uh, model and um, phase three of uh, clinical study is on uh, human so uh, in uh, in france there is uh, two uh, clinical studies uh, the first is um, financed by uh, Earth government, French government, uh, his name uh, Xmoke. Um, this study take place on 16 hospital in France, one uh, for 600 uh, people are uh, included in this study. The aim is to prove that vaping is a, a, an official good device to stop tobacco. It's a real, so, it's a real problem. Yeah. And this, this, uh, in these studies, this um, device, a cigarette, is compared with uh, Champix. With uh, the very the clean, in fact, right. yes. Because, because yeah. this, uh, this drug is, uh, is paid for treatment yes. of tobacco in France. Yes. Okay. And what do you expect the results from this? Side? Oh, at the end of uh, 2023. Yeah. Three more years. Yeah. Three more years to be published. Yeah. So just a couple of notes here. Uh, and, and again, we can't do nothing about the accent, but we're. I think I hope you get the general idea. Number one, 
funded by the government. And, and I say that because I don't want people to say, oh, yeah, here's a, a vape guy and he, vaping is good and vaping is good, fine, like some people would say. Or a cop out not to try vaping, I should say, more than anything else. But the funding that CryVape gets comes from the government. The government wants to find out if vaping is better than smoking, and it wants people that understand how to use these products in a real world setting. This is what CryVape is all about. Number one. Number two, he said that there's three different phases of what they're doing right now. Number one is the toxicity of cells, right? So what they're trying to figure out is not just if you know, but you put vapor on cells and what the reaction is going to be, but different flavorings as well too, which is something that nobody talks about in this industry. I mean, there was a big talk back in 2014 and 2015 by Dr. F that brought this up, but really, really, how many liquid companies you know that actually do molecular testing, level testing, from their flavorings on actual cells. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to be worse than smoking, but there is a level of harm that we're looking for here. And there might be some flavorings out there that are more harmful, harmful in their molecular status than other flavorings. And also, when you combine those together, which is something that we talked about a lot during our trip in France, right, for, uh, Phil? Yeah, absolutely. You know, th there, there's, um, you know what I think that uh, Alpha Liquid is trying to do? I think Alpha Liquid is trying to make a 100% safe Correct. Electronic cigarette product. I right? agree. I agree. And totally. and something that they can advertise as such. Yeah. Right. Trying to trying to prove that based on science and research and the help of uh, Crevape and um, Sebastian there, you know, doing these kinds of studies. Um, so I, I find it really interesting that when you saw the Alpha E liquid, you saw how all inclusive that e liquid company is, right? You saw that the the automation and the shipping, the, the shipping and the automation, the shipping and the manufacturing, or the automation and the manufacturing, uh, but also to have that kind of a research lab under your umbrella in your building, uh, I think there's a, a lot of benefit there. Um, and you know, w when you see that from a company, when you see how they they do all that research, how 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 they're funding, helping to fund the research supporting the research, uh, you know, and the way their vape shop operates, right? We, I think Dimitri said something really interesting when we were there and we, when we were doing the video, he said it adds a legitimacy uh, to the industry. And I really, I truly believe it does. I really, really believe it does. I, I think, you know, if, if everything was run that way, you would look at things uh, a little bit different. Maybe maybe regulators would look at things a little bit different. Maybe the people who are on the outside looking in would look at, look at things uh, a little bit differently. So, you know, there there's a company, you know, right there that's number one, concerned with you not smoking anymore and also really concerned based on this research and having a guy like that in the same building, uh, you know, trying to make it as safe as possible for you too. Also keep in mind, absolutely right, Phil. I, 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 cannot, I cannot agree more with you. I, I think that if we had spent a little bit more time here in the United States for the last four or five years doing some of this work, instead of just spending money on marketing and selling and marketing and selling and marketing and selling, because that's where it seems what, what, we didn't even spend money on advocacy. We didn't spend money on science. We didn't spend money on influence. We didn't spend money on PR. All we did is spend money on marketing. And, and I think if we had done some of this work in the last four or five years in the United States, I think that we would be in a different place right now. Yeah, no, uh, I do. I and do that certainly that. is just my opinion. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yet, like, uh, so, so I see a comment here from Roger Paris. It sounds like they're trying to corner the market. I don't think so. No. It no. sounds like they're trying to be around. Yeah, I think that's just, I think that's right? just a lame comment. I'm sorry. I don't, yeah, think, no, I think, I I don't think that's true. Cryvape is not one company, it's not Alpha Liquid. There's six companies that are involved in Cryvape. Uh, and including the government as well, too. So I don't think that Alpha Liquid is trying to co uh, to corner nothing. I think they're just trying to prove to the government that this product is safe, and they're trying to make it this, as safe as possible. Again, we talked about levels of harm, okay? So according to one the, the methodology from the Royal College of Physicians, they came up with a 95% less harmful um, number. But that's based on some statistics based on patterns of use. And as that pattern of use changes, your levels of harm will change. I guarantee you that if you vape 20 meals uh, of, of liquid a day, it's not going to be 95%. It might be 93% less harmful. Again, it's less harmful. I think what they're trying to do is they're going to come up there. What they're trying to do is they're trying to put science behind vaping. And this right. is the only way we're going to survive. I mean, I hate right. to tell you. And, I, you know, I think that, that was something that I said a long time ago, you know, earlier on in, you know, when I was doing a whole lot of reviews, 
is I said, for some people, for some people, it's safer than smoking is going to be good enough. Yeah, it's going to be good enough. Right. But then there's going to be another group of people that are going to say, OK, you know, I'm doing this now, but now I want this to be as safe as possible. Yeah. Right. Uh, and you you can. I, I think that you can choose your 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 level of harm, your level of um, exposure. Right. Based on, you know, the temperature that you vape, the the uh, the, the the coil material, the and there should be studies for all this. There should be. Right. Uh, the the um, the amount of liquid that you're using, the flavorings in the liquid. Right. So for some people. And I agree with you. I agree with you. It's still safer than smoking. Yes, it is. I don't yes. care how you vape. It's still yes. safer than smoking, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. But I think you can also, within vaping, choose your harm level as well. Yeah. I think I think uh, a question from, uh, from uh, Tim, uh, do you think that this pushes it down a medical pathway? I don't think so. I think <laughs> with any consumer product that goes out there, I think there should be some science. I think there's, there's science with every consumer product that's being ingested or inhaled on the market. It's no different for us. And and if and if anything, if if this product is is what we 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 feel, it's something that we should show to the regulators as well too. And this product will never be regulated medically. It, it will never go to the medical pathway because it does not work as a dosage. It works as a variability and availability and just the variety of products that is out there. So what we're trying to determine is what is the best raw materials to use for these products and what results we're going to get. If you see in phase two, and then the next video will explain this a little bit longer, the phase two, they're actually using pigs as test subjects instead of mice, which we hear a lot here in the United States. They get cancer. With Mice are not good subjects to test vapor on. They're good for you know skin and stuff like that, but they're not good on vapor. So phase two is them using pigs because pig hearts are very, very similar to human hearts as well, too. You should uh, you should roll that mice footage. I will, and just I just want to put that this third point and say that phase three they're actually working with sixteen hospitals, with sixteen hospitals in France to get phase three. Meaning instead of giving Chantix to to people that are in the hospital, give them a vapor product and see if they can quit smoking and see what the results are going to be there. That that results are going to come in twenty twenty two or something like that. But these are the three phases that Crybape is doing, and you're going to say why don't mice work? Well, you know we have the answer right here. That was what is what is said basically, um, because you know those phase one, phase two, phase three studies. Phase one is on cells, phase two is on animal model, and phase three is on human model. Human. Uh, all those three phases are now uh, ongoing, okay. and the model phase two with animals. Uh, when we see publi publish, uh, um, publicity of the studies that was talking about cancer, etc. Right. That was made on mouse, Correct. lab mouse. And those mouse uh, developing by itself cancer. Sure. So it's not a good model. Sure, it's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. Not, it's not a good model for that. And, uh, and even with that model, they... they, they, they the they methodology found, was wrong. They, they yes. keep pumping. Yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yes. So... Uh, it is important to know exactly how to conduce those yeah. studies. And uh, I want to say that no animals was hurt yeah. <laughs> during those studies. They're still all alive and yeah. they feel good yeah. after <laughs> vaping. So. Yeah. so no pig was hurt in the making of this uh, study or this video. But what they're trying to say is that when you see these studies, where you, they, they, they put mice in a little box and they just pump them inside. You know, they, the results, you're not going to get accurate results because it's not real world testing. This is not how we use a product. We don't sit in a small box and people just pump vapor in, into this box constantly all day. That's not how we use the product. So realistically, the results that you're going to get are flawed. And it's unfortunately that we're using these test results that are coming from government funded sources here in the United States. I saw a really great comment inside the chat that says that it's the company's responsibility to prove. It's not the FDA's job to prove. And I totally agree with that. The way that the system here in the United States is for, for, for pharmaceutical products as well, too. The company has to put in the research and then you apply it to the FDA. That's exactly how it absolutely works. If any grants for the government are given to Staten Glands, University of California, and all these, you know, they're not going to say vaping is good. Because if they say vaping is good, they're not going to get any more grants. Think about it, folks. This is all about money. They need to put that, that, that idea into the head of regulators. That, oh, we need to do more research. Because if you look at all the studies here in the United States, what do they say? 
it may cause this. So the conclusion is that further research is needed. Okay, so let me translate this. We found something that's minute that's not going to have any effect on humans, but give us more millions of dollars so we can continue to do our research. That's exactly where it translates to. Yeah. So I think it's very, very important for people to understand it, it, the, the distinction between those two. Okay. Uh, let me see if we have any comments really, really quick to, um, to address. Well, we do, uh, we, we, so I got a comment here from Green Eyed Lady. What about Molecule? Aren't they taking over the yeah, I, market and manufacturing? Uh, I don't know. I don't know I how you can make anything. <laughs> Think green, all, I green, think green eyed lady. I have zero to do yeah, with molecule yeah. uh, these days. Yeah, I think molecule all they're doing is doing uh, pods. That's all they're doing. Uh, but anyway, uh, well, they make my blue. They fill the my blue. The pods. my blues. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. I have. I don't know if they're doing anything with manufacturing. I don't know if anybody manufactures steel liquid over there. Anyway, uh, all right. Let's move on to the next video. This is a study identifying uh, the bad flavors. Yeah, yeah. In France, we have uh, our study with um, Strasbourg Hospital. You know Strasbourg? Yeah, is yes. a, yeah, like, uh, a capital of Europe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, this study is we have two, uh, two goals, two targets. The first is to know the kinetic of assimilation of nicotine. So the time during uh, between vaping and after you find your uh, nicotine in your blood. Okay. The second point is to analyze uh, air expired by the human. Because in this air, we can check um, molecules which is, we can characterize uh, an oxidant stress, a stress which can be transformed in a few, uh, in few years in cancer. Okay? So we, we can check. Uh, Molecule. The idea is no molecule, no problem. Molecule, problem. So we can ban flavor if you have a problem. That's yeah. a, so if we find something that's bad, we can eliminate it from the market. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that study is done by you guys? Yes. Yeah. Again. What, what what they're trying to do with this phase of the of the of the, of the study is identify real use pattern, meaning somebody's going to inhale the product. And what's exhaled from it, measure the molecules and see if there's any harm from it. And dissect more into the combinations of flavors and the molecules that go into making these flavors. If you saw Phil's video uh, where we actually visited the lab where, where Alpha Liquid makes it, they make it molecule up. right? They don't buy flavorings from Capella and TPA and mix them together and come up with a recipe and then they put it on the market. If they come up with a strawberry... They actually make the strawberry from molecule up, meaning they'll make the stem, they'll make the, the red part of the strawberry, the juicy part of the strawberry, whatever it is, all with molecules up. Or if they have a strawberry kiwi, they're going to make the strawberry kiwi from molecules up. That way you don't get a kiwi that has a little bit of the stem on it and a strawberry there. And then you have to play around and then add sucralose to make, you know, make, it, make it sweet or whatever uh, and stuff like that. So it was really, really impressive uh, in, in my opinion. Anything, any comment that you want here, Phil? Uh, no, uh, but, but what, uh, I wanted, I want to, um, let me talk to Ronnie here for just a minute. Okay. Yeah. Let me talk to Ronnie real yeah. quick. Ronnie, Ronnie, listen, okay. Here's what you got to tell your wife. Okay. Because no, this is something preface that we talked Preface What's this. That? Why, why are you talking to Ronnie? What, preface it. Uh, well, don't worry. I'm going to get to it. Ronnie's, Ronnie's wife, she tried vaping and she coughed. Okay. Uh, and, and by the way, if you guys haven't seen the Alpha Liquid videos, the two of them, uh, the vape shop and the the the, the facility, they're, they're really good videos, guys. Go check them out. Um, I think you'll, you'll get some good good stuff out of there. But Ronnie, okay, here's what you got to tell your wife. First of all, there's a lot a lot of different ways uh, that she can she can try to help her with the coughing. All right, she can try higher VG. She can try backing off on her power a little bit. She can try taking a, a smaller inhale. She can try opening up her airflow a little bit, which I don't necessarily agree with that. But, okay, so there's a lot of different things she could try. But here's what I want you to tell your wife, Ronnie. Listen, listen. When your wife had her first cigarette, okay, and she took that first inhale, did she go, oh, my God, that is so smooth and lovely? No, she probably coughed. She probably coughed and hacked and choked. And what did she do? She had another inhale and then another inhale. And then she had another cigarette and then another pack. And then all of a sudden, she didn't cough anymore. Okay? 
And I'm not just saying this to you, Ronnie, and to Ronnie's wife. I'm saying this to anybody who's watching this show right now. It will pass. It will pass. Okay? But the thing is, as she was getting used to her cigarette, she was getting used to a device that was going to eventually lead to tobacco-related harm or illness or sickness or cancer or death. All right? What I want your wife to do, Ronnie is to give an electronic cigarette all of the same chances that she gave her cigarette to get used to it because the coughing will pass. It will pass. It will go away, okay? So give this new thing that's going to give her a healthier lifestyle all the same chances that she gave that old thing that could have potentially caused her to die of cancer. That's all I'm saying. We, we hear this all the time. It's like a <coughs> I can't do it. I cough. Okay. You will get used to it. You will get used to it the same way you got used to the cigarette. Give it a chance. Okay. All right. Moving along to the next video. And the third one, which is the, the, the largest study uh, over the Europe, it involves uh, 1,300 people. And I think there's 400 more now. It is conducted in Switzerland. Uh, by uh, five universities, universities of Bern, Lausanne, Geneva, Geneva and uh, two, two another, Zurich, two news, Zurich and Saint Gallen. And Saint Gallen, yeah. Uh, so uh, this study is aimed to uh, um, provide data on uh, uh, what the vaping uh, is uh, doing to a smoker. In fact, what are all the uh, side effects and if it's a real cessation tool yeah. for that. So uh, this will be again, published in scientific reviews, I guess, around 2022, 23. Yeah. Yeah. With maybe some press release before, but uh, partial uh, elements. So we're using, and the fact is that uh, those universities were looking for a supplier uh, of e-liquid at that moment okay. and they had very uh, high standard uh, requirement because it was phase three study so it is used on human so they couldn't take any risk uh, with the with the with the volunteers of the study so uh, <clears throat> they started to check manufacturers all over uh, the world again and they started in switzerland because you're very uh, uh, pro Swiss industry, yeah. uh, and, and and finally the we were Gatron was the unique manufacturer who could supply them with the, in, in liquid yeah. because we uh, answered all their requirements. Mm -hmm. They came and they uh, tested all the products over there, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so vaping is absolutely not dangerous as it is uh, uh, described in, in yeah. main media, you know, if it was killing people, uh, <laughs> they won't conduct any studies on phase three. Yeah. Right. So, so th those are the three phases and it, it, it really answers one question, folks. I, it, some of the comments sometimes on these videos, and there weren't that many, it was just one or two here. There's always these people in this industry that say, that these go a little bit overboard. But let me tell you what they're doing, what CryVape is doing. They're answering the question, what exactly is in this? Okay? Because if you ask most of the manufacturers out there what is in this, they're going to say, oh, it's four ingredients. No, 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 it's not four ingredients. It's not. And you have to be honest with yourself. Not only is it not four ingredients, but you don't know where these flavors are being made or where you buy. You're buying a ready flavor made from a company that you don't know how that flavor has been made. And you don't know what the real world uh, results are going to be when you vaporize it at 60 watts, when you vaporize it at 15 watts, when you vaporize it with a 0.2 ohm coil, with a vaporizer with a 1.6 ohm coil, uh, on the pattern of draw, on the airflow. There's a lot of questions there that aren't answered. But I think that these phases of this studies and these studies that CryVape is doing answers exactly that question. And they're doing it for the regulators because the regulators in France are going to tell them, hey, what's in this? And I guarantee you that when all this is going to be done, they're going to be able to answer that. And I think it's something that we should take seriously. And, and I truly wish that we have taken it more seriously here in the United States, Phil. 
No comment. Oh, did you just say like Phil? You. I did. I did. Yeah. I did you say Phil? I no, I agree with you. I yeah, agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, how many times have we heard? We don't even know what's in there. We don't even know what's in there. Like, like how incompetent can you be? This, 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 this yeah. Vaping has been around for more than 10 years. How do you not know what's in there at this point? But, I mean, they're, they're answering it down to a molecular level what's in there. Yeah. Right? So when, they, when, when you say, well, we don't even know what's in there, alpha liquid and cryovape is going to be able to say, yeah, we do. Here it is. Yeah, and right? it's something that the entire industry can use as well, too. Don't think that what cryovape is doing, they're doing it specifically for alpha liquid. They're not. They're doing it right. for the industry, and right. I think that's very, very important to to understand. Uh, uh, go yeah. ahead. A couple things here. Just a break in here. Uh, Larry, uh, challenge accepted. If you want to try to drink me under the table, New Year's Larry. Eve, I dare you. I Larry. double dog. I double dog dare you. Larry, right. you better have one of those buttons that they press on for old people to have the ambulance there come quickly to you. That's all I want to say. It's like I've fallen and I can't get up. Yeah, because you will not get up. Yeah. I want to say hello to Don Burton and to uh, to KS. Um, I was actually going to review it. Look, there it is right there, KS. Uh, that's the uh, Amani, Armani. Anani. Armani. Yeah, I have it too. I have it too. I just I can't believe that it doesn't have airflow on it. And, do, you and, want, do you want the five-minute review, the five-second review? Five-second? Um, yeah, I don't want five minutes of it, though. Uh, the five-second review is I hate the fact that I have to make my coil in reverse. i got to make my coil anti counterclockwise yeah. to get it in there the right way. You can only fit a very, very small coil. I am getting a little bit of gurgling, but I can adjust my cotton because of that. Uh, and I, I'm surprised that it doesn't have any airflow. I'm surprised it, too. Even for me, even for me, a mouth to lung vapor, I find it a little bit tight, just a little bit tight. Yeah. Um, outside of the, uh, oh, in the mouthpiece, I, I find to be uh, too wide. I don't like uh. wide mouthpieces in my mouth. Um, uh, outside of that, uh, decent flavor uh, and, and a relatively good vape. It's just not very adjustable. Wow. There you go. I agree with everything. I, if we're going to start doing dual reviews. That's the way I should do reviews. I bet you get I a know. lot more views. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if we're going to do dual reviews, it's going to pose a huge problem because we we are so similar when we look at these products that it's not going to be fun and, and, and exciting and like, you know, punches thrown and stuff like that because I totally I agree. I agree with you. I built it and uh, I get exactly the same thing. And if you just don't like that airflow, what do you do? You're screwed. Yeah, it's a little yeah, bit too tight for me as well too. I like a looser MTL, personally. I mean, you right. could, you, uh, I, I know you could take that insulator or the diffuser out, but then I, I'm yeah. guessing it's going to be too loose. Too loose at that point. Too loose. Too loose. All right. So anyway, there you go. There you all go. right. So let's move along. Of course, I ask you know the oh so popular uh, lung question to to the good PhD um, Sebastian uh, Doctor. So I've got a question for you. A serious question. In America, the problem that we have constantly is we try to bring up the studies. Most of the studies have been done in Europe. The past study that the FDA is doing takes seven, eight years from now, as I know, for a very long time. Are British lungs different than the American lungs? Is the tissue of the British lungs different than the tissue of a U.S. smoker's lung? I guess they're breathing a little bit with an accent. Yeah. But uh, um, but it, I know it sounds kind of funny, but this is what we hear constantly in America. They say, well, we cannot take the Royal College of Physicians. The U.S. Surgeon General of America, the top doctor, dismissed the Royal College of Physicians, the largest body of physicians in the world, just completely dismissed it. Yes. yes. And, and saying that the U.K. is different than the United States. But science is science. Right? Yes. And all the thing is that they're hiding behind methods because we're lacking methods. That's why we're pushing so hard to have some standard on that industry. And with standard, you have methods. You know exactly how to, how to look uh, inside the, the product uh, and uh, how to measure it and, 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 and make your conclusion from that. And, uh, you know, I've seen <clears throat> studies uh, you know, just washing your lungs in nicotine. And after that, just looking at them and saying, oh, 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 this is very bad. Yeah, of course, this is very bad, but this is absolutely not science. Yeah. You know, because nicotine is not, uh, lungs are not washed in nicotine. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. I think it's important to note here that we've talked about this when we had Dr. F on as well, too. You know, when you vape, there are, you'll find metals, right, in the exhaled vapor. But what you're going to find is that it's not the dose, excuse me, not the poison, it's the dose of it, right? What, at what point is it acceptable? From Adaha, you're going to find that in vapor as well, too. Way below the acceptable limit. Metals, way below the acceptable limit. This is data that we need to have present. So when they say, oh, we found lead 
and vapor, which we've heard here on the news many, many times, we can come back and say, yeah, of course there's lead. But look, look at the threshold of lead that you're going to find in there. It's not even registering because that's the truth. That's exactly what you're going to find. And we need to have these studies. Also, right. a little comment that I found that I saw on here that, that really kind of pissed me off is going to set me off today. From Roger Paris, it sounds like Demetrius, that's not my name, my name is Demetrius, first of all, uh, is making a case for the government. Listen, <laughs> listen, let me tell you something. Oh Here we let, go. let me tell you something, Mr. Roger Paris. I'm not making a case for the, for the government. I'm making a case for this product to be around for years to change smokers' lives, okay? If you don't know the work that I've done in this industry for the last 10 years, you can go fuck yourself. So continuing the, continue the conversation, uh, Phil. What they're trying to do here is find the acceptable limits of what is allowed to be in the vapor. All right. of those are going to be found as a byproduct in the vapor. Yeah. And by the way, you're absolutely dead on uh, about the metals. However, uh, you're also off a little bit. Uh, I noticed this when I was editing the video. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear both Sebastian and uh, Alex uh, talk about metals but it's not metals. They're talking about methods. They're saying methods. Yeah, yeah, yeah And yeah, it's yeah. coming out like it sounds, it sounds yeah, like Yeah, yeah, on some of them do. But the truth is that there are all this formaldehyde. We've, we've seen it in right, test results. Course. We've seen well, uh, aldehydes. We've seen it's the level. It's the level that we need to be able to quantify in right. a number and, and then, again, put it in a chart comparing it to cigarettes as always. Okay, because it's something else that we forget. If you look at the, 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 the chart of a non-smoker, then with a vapor, and then the smoker, you're going to see completely the difference. And then right. also the government has acceptable levels that you can inhale, right? If you work at a factory somewhere, there's an acceptable level of formaldehyde that you can intake in a day where it's not harmful to you. And if right. you put the numbers of vapor products against those numbers, you're going to see that it's way below the acceptable levels. Right. And this, uh, I don't know if you have that slide handy. It's the slide that we show all the time uh, on the Smoker Absolutely. Show. Uh, you do? Absolutely. Uh, but anyway, I, I, even if you don't. I even do. If you don't, look at that. Look at that. Okay. Uh, so never prepared. mind the smoking. Uh, smoking equals bad. Reducing cigarettes. I want you to take a look at something else here. Okay. This is something that we have been saying since day one on this show. If you see a negative article about vaping, question whether or not that article compared the negative to that of a traditional combustible tobacco cigarette. If it does not, in our opinion, it's invalid. Why? Why is that? Because we know that vaping is not harm elimination. Everybody says, well, you, you know, uh, it's not safe, right? Okay, we understand that, but it's harm reduction, when you compare it to a cigarette, it's magnitude safer than a cigarette, all right? But for some reason, some reason, our elected officials cannot understand that. They can't grasp that concept. They can't figure that out. You know, if you continue to test and test and test, how hard are, are you trying to find something wrong with this thing? Yeah. Right. If you continue to try, you're going to find something wrong with it. Absolutely. If you look in my refrigerator right now and if you put every product in my refrigerator through the testing that they're putting electronic cigarettes through, you're going to find something wrong with everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything. Absolutely. OK, this is harm reduction. It's not harm elimination. Wrap your damn heads around that. And I think that's the problem where we lost the T21. It's like it's being compared to be as harmful as cigarettes. So the bigger picture is not just the T21. The bigger picture is here that the government has concluded that this product has no place in the market, in my opinion. So anyway, uh, just, uh, just to lighten up the mood a little bit, Buster McMahon, a feel just to let you know, the two guys, Andy and Randall, uh, that were watching one of your first shows, both quit smoking and now just vape. So that's what it's about. Wonderful. And to lighten up the mood a little bit uh, yeah. more... Uh, Larry, I'm ready for you. This is, I think, I think we drank the last bottle on one of the, the lives that we did. Did you get? Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, I did. So I went out and I bought a larger bottle. So uh, Larry. That is a big bottle on. of Jack, buddy. It's on, Larry. And Larry, on. No, Larry can't hang. Larry's going to be in bed by 930. He's not even going to do New Year's Eve. What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> by the way, I got, a really, I got a really cool Christmas present. Uh, although you're going to think I'm a dork and a geek, which yeah. you already think so. Anyway. Uh, the the you present those, that you got for yourself? You know those? No, no, no. My my brother got it for you. You know those big round ice cubes? Yeah, 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 yeah. For your for your for your drink? Oh, I love those. Yeah. Right. So now I have those same big round ice cubes, uh -huh. but they come out like a little Death Star from Star Wars. 
Ah, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's makes, a Death Star ice, big ice ball maker. As long as it makes my uh, my uh, scotch uh, chilled, that's all I, I, I really care about. <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's go to the next question here with Sebastian. We got to move along. Hey, what, yeah. what, is, what is your background? Uh, scientific doctor. Scientific doctor. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, so you have a doctor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. PhD. So let, let me ask you this. Based on everything that you've seen and studied so far, is there any reason for somebody not to try vaping if they're currently a smoker? <laughs> the question is, give someone... By the way, I just want to make sure that, that you heard the question. It's something that we ask here on the show to every doctor that we bring on, or every scientist that we bring on. If there's any reason right now, if you're a smoker, right, and you've tried the available methods and you haven't been able to quit smoking, if there's any reason you shouldn't try vaping, okay? And we're going to get to the answer here. Smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Do you as a scientist? Based on what you have seen so far, no. and the testing no. that you have done, forget the outside testing. Yes. Like, like, if there's like, any reason why they shouldn't try like, it. Like a uh, wife. Yeah, except <laughs> okay. No reason. 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 No. Actu actually, actually, we investigate um, <clears throat> vape, passive, passive vaping. The second hand vaping. Second hand, yeah. hand vapor. Second yeah. and, uh, we don't find uh, nicotine in, in this piece. Yeah. No. Nothing. No. Nothing. Only PG a little bit more. That's yeah. all. That's all. No. No nicotine. <clears throat> because uh, guys who realize these studies are not equipped by uh, good uh, practice, uh, analytical practice. It's uh, when you saw <clears throat> method and materials that are in this laboratory. You found a lot of materials, a lot of method, a lot of time to develop, uh, to quantify, and to know what we can find in your, your the aerosol of your e-cigarettes. This is the first point. The second point, in publication, we, we, we saw only vaping kill e-cigarette kit. What kind of e-cigarettes? What kind of PG? What kind of nicotine? What kind of flavor? What, what is your method? You, you, you use mouse? Mouth, uh, mice, sorry, to to uh, to um, to understand um, um, kinetic of absorption of nicotine. It's not. Uh, it's a bad model. It's not yeah. a good model. My my mice, sorry, the problem yeah. Mice is okay for um, uh, I don't know uh, skin skin yeah. irritation. Yes. That's all. Okay. Pig Where pig is know? a pig is a good model for. Uh, uh, human yeah. you can yeah. transfer your data from uh, from yeah. pig to human so the short answer is there's absolutely no reason for you if you are a smoker there's absolutely no reason for you not to try vaping to quit smoking and, and and not only did he say that but you also noticed that he said there's no harm from secondhand vape either. yes absolutely right? all the testing that they have done they, they found nothing in the second hand. We hear this all the time, all the time. I got a message on Facebook the other day. For, I guess it's a pave mom or whatever. I don't know how she found me, probably from Twitter. That says, do you vape in the car with your kids? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. She's like, well, you shouldn't subject them to those toxic. And I was like, listen, if I need your opinion on how to raise my kids, I will certainly ask for you. And you, I said, you should get off this vaping thing and go parent your kids a little bit more because <laughs> I'm sure they're doing a whole lot more. But... I trust these people that do this testing, and they're not the only ones. Dr. F has said the same thing, Dr. Pelosa, uh, Dr. Abrams. Secondhand vaping, there's absolutely no harm to bystanders at all, at all. And this is what we're hearing from the scientists, and the reason why we wanted to play this is for you guys to hear it as well, too. And, 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 and I think that I'm, I'm going to play this next video back-to-back -back on this because this is something that we hear all the time. Is like why is one scientific group finding one result and why another scientific group is finding another result? And I think Phil is the one that followed up with this question. So let me just go ahead and play that real quick. In, in your opinion, okay, so we, we are seeing science. We're seeing studies that are anti-vaping, yeah. right? In your opinion, why, why is that? Because, I, I mean, there's an overwhelming amount of proof and data at this point yeah. that, that is that is proving that vaping is far safer than smoking. Yes. So why even the scientific community, why are they trying why are they not to, embracing? Why are they not embracing this? Why are they trying to demonize it so much? In your opinion. Yes. 
Unfortunately, we do not live in the ideal world, you know, where scientists are uh, making just science from nowhere, you know, just for the know-how of the humanity or to save it or whatever. We know that some scientists are under pressure of the money. When you have a lab to run, you, you need to have some clients. Grants. Grants. Etc. Etc. And for Trump, it's the same with politics. It's the same with yeah. everywhere. Yeah. In fact, so that's why we see those uh, those uh, fake science, in fact, published. And then it's not a problem. You can publish whatever you want. Okay. You you, you need to see the scientific review that is publishing this and the uh, impact factor of the review. In fact, also to have a certain credibility. And the problem is that media are just take, grabbing these fake news and spreading them like, like hell, you know? Yeah. And this is something curious there. Yeah. When we see that media are just taking a part of the truth and spreading it mm -hmm. all over. But, but, but I want to I I pose the question to you, okay? You. How, how could you, as a scientist, say vaping is good and another scientist say vaping is bad? How is that possible? This is science. This is data. This is research. These are numbers. Numbers don't lie. How is this happening? It's, it's method. It's comparison. Um, for a French, uh, French study, French, French chemical study, doctor, professor, then they don't know how to use this device. How many, uh, how you need to impregnate your, your cotton? I don't know, I don't know. Vaping, vaping of what? Vaping of what? What is the power? Yeah. <laughs> how PG, PG, PG ban? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, so, so that's why we need to um, combine it this, this professor. Yeah. This is the first point. The second point. Uh, each in Europe, each country want, want to um, produce their study. French study, UK study, Italian study, Switzerland study. Not, I don't want to use the French study for you, Switzerland study. Yeah. I need my study to have my religion. <laughs> yes. And I think that goes back to the question I, Dimitri asked before. Our lungs are the same. Yeah. UK, French, American, Absolutely. maybe not Greek. No, maybe not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> look, 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 look for this. Uh, this in France we have two studies. Okay, two protocol different. In one kind we use two two liquid with uh, the difference is uh, the strength of nicotine, and uh, in, in official study, X smoke they use one one e liquid. And another is, uh, is um, uh, a drug with uh, varinicline. So the, compar the, the comparison is, not, is the not the same. That's why in Europe we use one device. This device is 6, 40 watts, uh, uh, GSRM, uh, mm -hmm. um, e-liquid PGVG uh, C20. 74, uh, 74, yes. and with this um, um, process, we can also compare a little the bit the data, the result. But everybody wants their study. Everybody wants to want their their, their protocol. Not the, the same with right. UK, the same in in uh, Oregon. I don't know. So, so there's a lot of there's a lot of scientists out there. Number one, justifying their paycheck. Yes. Number two, guaranteeing their paycheck. Okay. Yes. So okay. we are not. Uh, you you are agree that in this room uh, there is uh, in the know twenty two degrees Celsius. You are agree. You are agree. You are agree. Me too. You too. Yeah. You too. Okay. Everybody is okay. It's not the same for uh, clinical studies. <laughs> it's forty four. From my point, from from my point of view, from my protocol, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's 44 degrees. Mm -hmm. So yeah.
So, so the, uh, one of the goals, like, is what we talked about, is coming up with unified, unified the protocols. Yes, uh, that that can be recreated. Yeah. And like you were saying, it's important that the, the the scientists that are doing these studies be educated on how to even use the product, Absolutely. right? And, and I mean that goes back to the people that are making the laws against these products. They don't even understand the products, but they're making laws yes. about them. Yeah, absolutely. They just yeah. receive a paper where everything is written, and they say, "Okay, I approve. I trust you. I approve it." That's all. That's all. In uh, in Europe, they prepare TPD free. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so actually, um, the group of researcher Research. that work on this uh, this subject. <clears throat> And they need to uh, to um, to create a thesis on vaping, on uh, based on publication on epidu epidemiology uh, public publish publication on vaping. Okay, so they uh, they uh, read uh, all the literature on on the topic, mm -hmm. and they uh, they um, they Classified. count they count good publish or bad publish. So publish is bad, one, publish is bad, two, publish is bad, three, four, five, ten, twenty, eighty, publish is good, another one, and they compare. The, the most, uh, uh, for the most important, most important public publication are, uh, are, uh, are followed by uh, European Commission and their, um, from, from a post with point of view, they propose the, f the next uh, TPD free. So if you have a more good publication than bad publication, good... Uh, the better will be the good, uh, good, 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 good. And yes. This is no sense. No sense. This is because no it's sense. epidemiology approach. It's not a good one. It's mass approach. All, all guy laughing. Okay. And counting just publications, it's, it's like, I don't know, kids can do this. Right. We do not pay politics for that. Yeah. I can, you know. So uh, we have to, to look deeper in science and, and, and use real science to regulate something that could save billions of people on Earth. So, uh, and, and bottom line, that's what this is all about. That's what this should be all about. Yes. You know, one of the things that I say is if vaping is five percent safer than smoking, then why isn't it embraced by every your agency, agency that agency. cares about your health? Yes, yes. But we're talking upwards of 95%, and maybe even more. Yes. This should be hailed as the greatest yes. public health achievement yes. of all time, and instead, they're constantly trying to shut it down. It's disgusting. That, it's, it's, it's funny, because I do not see nowhere a ban of cigarettes. And maybe everybody yeah, knows yeah, yeah. cigarettes. Nobody's talking about that. No. No. Cigarettes is killing everybody, mm -hmm. but there's no ban discussed in nowhere. Yep, because it keeps because it keeps tobacco revenues, yes. because it keeps tobacco taxes, yes. and because it makes people sick, sick. and because mm -hmm. and then big pharma, pharma everybody, everybody wins. Yeah. Everybody yeah. wins except yes. the life of the smoker. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. I think Welcome. this was a really exciting talk, and, and I can't wait to share this. Uh, okay. Definitely on the smoker show. Okay. Yeah. So I know that was a lot to take in. That was a big segment. But just to recap briefly, uh, Phil, obviously the question was why are some scientists coming out with good and bad data? And the answers are a lot. It's not just one answer. I mean, obviously, number one, you know, they're under a lot of pressure. You know, they need to come up with some results uh, and they need to get money. They need to keep these labs and these employees and the scientists that they have on staff and the, and the staffers and the assistants and all. They need to keep them on board. They need to get this money to do this, this science. Number two, methodology, Right. right? So if I take if I take if if you take me, right, and Phil gives me his Star Wars stuff, I don't know what to do with it, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna start hitting the buttons or whatever, and if it whatever, like I mean, I don't know nothing about Star Wars. No, I haven't even watched Star Wars ever in my life. So now you're giving the scientist has never dealt with vaping at all a device, and you're telling him do some testing. He does he know how to prime the coil? Does he know that the resistance of that coil at 1.6 needs 10 to 11 watts and not 40, like we've seen in some instances? Does he know about dry hits? Does he know the pattern, the puff pattern, what the average draw is? He has absolutely no idea of all that. All they do is they do these tests and they get these results, and this is the protocol they came up with. And of course, 
one of the biggest things that he that 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 Sebastian ma- mentioned, which I've heard this from other scientists as well too, it's the ego, right? It's the ego. I did this study, and this study is valid, because nobody wants to be embarrassed in the scientific community. Nobody wants to say, "Oh, look, you know, you did this wrong." And I think that's that plays a big role of what we're seeing here in the United States. And of course, lastly, you know, the different protocols and all that. If you if the, the fact that they're talking about TPD3 being determined based on just counting good to bad studies instead of looking at the studies is a scary proposition for the European community yeah. as well, too. And I'm, I'm scared for TPD3. I really am. Phil, your thoughts? Yeah, it, it's, it's pretty unbelievable, um, you know, that, that, that they're just counting studies. Uh, we've seen methodologies fail, uh, like, blatantly twice now. You know, one was the um, the old formaldehyde study that that Dr. Farsalinos uh, came out against, um, where it was the the dry hit phenomenon, right? Yeah. They weren't keeping the coil wet, and they were just firing it and firing it and firing it, and it was producing garbage, right? Yet no vapor, no va- none of us would vape a dry coil, yeah, <laughs> right? So there's a methodology problem. This latest study that just came out, the formaldehyde. Hitting a a, a watt, a thirty watt coil at two hundred watts, Crazy. no vapor would be able to to, to to stand that, right? Which, so, by the way, I want I want to just just interrupt you really quick here. I just uh, sent the stuff to Doctor Farsalino. She's going to replicate the Aspire Cleto study. I sent him the exact liquid that they used. I sent him the Aspire tank. I sent him the Aspire, Aspire coils, all to grease because he's going to replicate it and, of course, prove it uh, that it that it's uh, that yeah. it's false. But yeah. anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Well, you know, and you know, somebody just mentioned popcorn lung too, and yeah, popcorn lung has been talked about and discussed. There's never been a, a case of popcorn lung attributed to, to vaping. I mean, the, the people who got popcorn lung were working with their heads over vats of buttery flavored goodness for popcorn. Mm-hmm. That's that's how the disease got its name. You guys know that, right? Mm-hmm. The sitting, their heads were over vats of diacetyl. And they were breathing it in all day. And they got popcorn. There's more diacetyl in a cigarette than there is in the strongest, you know, uh, offender of e-liquid. It's uh, and now, oh, my God, now I'm seeing all of the ambulance chasers come out of the woodwork. Uh, you know, the, uh, you know, is your son addicted or is your kid addicted to Don't Joel? Get off topic, Don't get off topic. <laughs> huh? Don't get off topic. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, yeah. All right, I got one more question here for the doctor, and then we're gonna get into the salt nick as well too, which I found was yeah. uh, was yeah. uh, was a really really great conversation. And then we're gonna have uh, some funny video as well too. Because we do have some fun stuff for you guys yeah, tonight. We do have and some don't fun forget, stuff. don't forget, we're gonna let you know how to win the stocking. Uh, I put the stocking uh, the the link to it mm-hmm. in the uh, the YouTube chat. I'll put it in here again. Uh, how to win that stocking is still coming up tonight. Okay, good. Dick. All right, I'm gonna play this video here for you guys. A common question that we ask here all the time. The biggest issue we have right now, most smokers, especially in the United States, believe that vaping is just as bad or even worse yes. than traditional cigarettes. I know. And that is slowing down the attempt of them. If they have tried the double methods and have quit to to transfer over to, to smoking. So Shouldn't that be our number one focus? Our number one focus is to at least change the perception yes. of the smoker on what this product is. Definitely. Uh, uh, but, you know, we're facing uh, a media campaign, which are, it, it's a campaign. It's yeah. not just like news. It's a campaign. Yeah. So uh, it is very difficult if we do not have access to those media to, to, to do so, so we can we have to do it at another level, and the other level, which is uh, where, that, that we can reach, is just the retails. Retails are in contact with with customers yeah. and, and social media, but in social media you can find everything, and find it's not n- accurate information there. You cannot trust yeah. everything on, on social media. But in a shop, that is the part of the professionalization of the shopkeeper. And we are here to supply that information and and answer all those questions. And you guys are here for that also, to spread that. And we have to react immediately, not waiting months, weeks, 
uh, etc., to, to to have a response because yeah. we have it, we have it immediately. But until it is spread among vapors, well, the fake news worked. Yeah. You know, so uh, we have to be yeah united and connected also all together. Mm -hmm. So you, as a scientist, you uh, with with a PhD, what message would you have to smokers who are hesitant because of all of this misleading information who are hesitant to try vaping? What message would you have for these people? Oh, my message is very clear. Uh, nicotine is uh, is not uh, dangerous. It's only addictive. That's all, and um, <clears throat> this molecule can help you, a smoker, to to kite this uh, this level, and to uh, one day uh, to uh, to breathe uh, fresh air. That's all. Yes. Act actually, uh, nicotine is uh, the evil, and uh, this this um, publicity yes is yeah. uh, came from Pfizer because Pfizer wants. To put their uh, varinicin, they depends more than one billion, yeah, billion euro. Euros. And uh, I think this is very important. I want people to pay attention to what they're saying here. The war against nicotine started from Pfizer. Okay, the war on nicotine. Right, getting in the heads of people and telling them, "Oh, it's nicotine. It's carcinogenic. It's nicotine that's killing people." That started from Pfizer. That's it's a huge, huge revelation that we're getting here from Sebastian. Uh, this this uh, substitute is not uh, used in France, is not used in Europe. They want to destroy nicotine to uh, put in first place their uh, bad product. Yeah. This is a reality. Big pharmaceutical. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We know that Pfizer were, uh, was called on lobbying. Uh, Anti-vaping association and regulator in, in in Germany was published in Der Spiegel, but that news was published there, but it wasn't making head news headlines, headlines yeah. all over the world, yeah. you know. So uh, and this is something that the, the vape community has to share fast, because at some point you are ignored, totally ignored by uh, authorities until everybody is on the same page, on the same line, and diffusing the same message. They cannot ignore that message. And, if you, and then the debate can occur, yes. you know? So a few months ago, there was revealed that uh, Pfizer had paid for an anti-vaping campaign in a group in Europe. And it made the rounds a little bit. But guess what? You didn't see it on Fox News, you know, headline, as we're seeing uh, uh, when they're talking about bad about vaping. We don't see it frontline on CNN. We don't see it frontline on AP. We don't see it. We didn't see probably one of the biggest scandals in Europe. They actually paid a huge fine to the European Commission uh, for doing this. But again, it was something that, you know, had like a 24-hour cycle, and it was pretty much kept locally there. I think it was in Brussels where it was, where it was found out. But... But what they're saying here is that, you know, when we see stuff like that, we really need to share it wider. We need to get, get more publicity on this so people can understand that nicotine, and in, in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of a lot of scientists that I've talked to, nicotine is probably the least harmful substance in an electronic cigarette. It is. You know, so, you know, I, I've made this analogy before. So tonight, what did I have tonight? I had two cappuccinos, right? And I had two espressos. Yeah, you're going to be up all night, baby. So, yeah, I know I am. Um, <laughs> so uh, am I a caffeine head? Am I a caffeine junkie? You know, the, the difference between caffeine and nicotine is that nicotine is the delivery system. It's the delivery system. Caffeine never was delivered in a form that it would kill you. Nicotine was. Was, right? N not with vaping. But it is in, in, in a cigarette. And I think that's why nicotine is demonized so much. Uh, yeah, I mean, th they're even questioning whether or not, you know, we're, we're hearing all of these, this, you know, uh, nicotine can, you know, damage uh, children's brain, the young developing brain. 
are there definitive studies on no, that? No, absolutely because, not. But I can tell you what, there is a definitive study on weed, on a young brain, absolutely, uh, at a young age, but not not on nicotine. I think it's it's all just made up. But um, but anyway, I th I think what I want you to take away from this is when when you have a PhD telling you that don't worry about nicotine. This is exactly what you need to take out of that segment and, and understand that there's powers way greater than what we ever can possibly think about being behind the scenes that are fighting against this product, not because the product is not good, but simply because it's cutting into the profits of Chantix, which is the drug that they want to make billion dollar industry. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so oh, the hot topic now, we're going <laughs> to have a hot topic. Uh, of course, uh, you know, we had to ask about salt nicotine. Because it's something that we get constantly, and, and me and Phil have been criticized on salt nicotine, and, and I will reiterate one more time that I don't care if you use salt nicotine, I don't care if you use regular nicotine, I don't care if you use mozzarella nicotine, I don't care what you use as long as you're not smoking, you're doing it right. But there are some questions that have you know come up, and and, and listen, I, I'm going to tell you that I personally, and I can only speak about personally, I've talked to people that have been addicted in the sense of fiending for salt nicotine. I find that. I, I, people within this industry that used to vape or vaped and then picked up a you know a jewel or something like that and then they got to the point where they can't put down that device. So that's saying something. Again, I'm not saying it's harmful. Okay, I'm just saying it's saying something that there is something there. And I'm glad that we had this talk with Sebastian because Sebastian really answered the question of what is different between salt nicotine to to regular nicotine. So let's go ahead and play that, and we'll come back and we're gonna we're going to discuss it uh, then, Phil. Have you done any research into, uh, because you were talking before about nicotine absorption. Yes. Yeah. Have you looked at nicotine salts at all? Yeah. We are online on this subject. We, <clears throat> we have a little uh, idea disturbed by uh, assimilation and addiction of uh, this molecule. But no result is available now. Okay, so you, you, if I heard that correctly, based on what you've seen so far, you're a little bit disturbed. Yes, a little but you bit. Have no conclusive results yeah. at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, that's really good. I think that we should use it in some other Yeah. Really yeah. About that because this is a question that we you know, hear all the time. We hear all the time. Like people keep asking about self and we don't have no data. <laughs> yeah. The only data we have is from Jewel. Well, we haven't seen that either. Until yes, we from, get the MTA. <laughs> from my point of view, uh, <clears throat> why not to use uh, nicotine salt? But you need to uh, to uh, supply um, protocol and a delay to use this molecule. You, you understand my, yeah. my, my sentence? Yeah. 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 So create a protocol yeah. that's specific. To yeah. Here. Okay. Why not? But during a short period, and with a protocol. Um, my tr trouble about uh, nicotine salt is that um, nicotine salt use a receptor um, more than traditional receptor of nicotine. You understand? Yes. Yeah, so they use a other other receptor, and that's why I'm not very uh, confident with um, with addiction. You're concerned with addiction. Yes, you're concerned. Yes. Salt. Yeah. And you're saying that nicotine salt uses more receptors? Yes, than so, traditional. Okay, okay. so and if I understand this correctly, all right, because one of the things that we hear with youth vaping is that they're concerned with the, the receptors in the brain, in the developing brain, yeah. right? So you're saying potentially that nicotine salt could be... Nicotine salt. Nicotine salt could be more harmful to the developing brain then a free base nicotine, is that what I'm hearing? It's not talking about development of brain. Okay. We're talking about the fact that in that mechanism, there's more, there, more in, additive. There, yes, they're involving more than traditional nicotine receptors. So we have some other receptors who are, uh, are uh, stimulated. Stimulated, yeah. Yes. And then you are, you are creating more and more receptors who, are, who will ask you uh, for that molecule. So, okay, in, so that's in, 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 fa in fine, you can, you can you, when you stop tobacco with nicotine salt, you need to have uh, <clears throat> nicotine salt all, all, all your life. Yes, you will use it all along. You won't decrease yeah. the, the strength of nicotine. Okay. 
So when you say it, it fires more receptors, yes. could nicotine, so one of the things that we talk about with, uh, with Juul and Juuling and the kids mm -hmm. is that they like the buzz, they like the feeling, the sense of euphoria that they yes. get. Because, but you can have it with, with regular, with you free can. base nicotine, right. but it depends on the strength of nicotine. Sure. In, in the US, there is no cap of yeah. that. So if, you use, if I use 60 milligram of free base nicotine, I will have a buzz. Yeah, same it's same feeling, same, same effect. Feeling. Exactly the same effect. Right. So uh, that's why it is uh, important to, to cap it and to find the right limit. Okay. And maybe if you want to go over that limit, because we know that some, some smokers need more nicotine than 20 milligram, like in Europe, uh, maybe this could be uh, uh, done under prescription or yeah. under surveillance yeah. or something like that. Okay. They control cell. Control, yeah. yeah. And, and you can go on higher nicotine level, you know, uh, like with medication. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is important. And, and that nicotine salt problem is investigated right now. Okay. And <coughs> we, we're not confident from the history of that molecule when it comes from. Which is big in. With big history. tobacco. And we know that. Uh, so uh, that industry, in fact, was... Uh, making and producing products to get people hooked on them. Yes. Proven. Proven. And that's is proven. Okay. Yeah. So everything yeah. that is coming from them is under suspicion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're totally apart from, from yeah. that industry. We, we, yeah. we, we, and we, we, we built our model uh, on, on the opposite side. Totally. So that's why we invest so much money to investigate each part uh, of the, the product and the side effects, et cetera. Interesting. So I know this is going to cause a lot of controversy, but before you get your panties in a bunch, okay, <laughs> I think what you need to do is just pay attention a little bit here to what they're saying is that in their testing, they found that nicotine salt not only affects the receptor of the brain that tells you about nicotine, right? So we know that, that when you vape and that nicotine hits that receptor in your brain, you feel calm or whatever. You So it affects other receptors in your brain as well too. And their concern is that uh, by using nicotine salt, that you're always going to need that amount of salt. And it makes sense to me. Uh, again, I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist here, but Juul was only 50 milligram when it launched. Okay? It was not 50, 25, 12, 6, like we have in regular free base nicotine, or how we learn how to vape, meaning starting at that high level to quit smoking and then find your happy place in order to maintain and enjoy vaping. Juul launched only with 50 milligram here in the United States. All right? I think we need to, to just put that in the back of our heads just for just a little bit. I'm not trying to be that big tobacco conspiracy theorist here. Don't 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 read too much into it. But just take into consideration what they're saying here uh, as the overall scope. What we have to think about is is that an, is that going to be an issue? If you're going to be vaping 50 milligram nicotine salt for the rest of your life, that's going to be an issue. I don't know the answer. I really don't, and we're not going to know that for the next 20, 30 years as we're going through that. But I do find it that it takes vaping from the enjoyable status as we know it into the dosage status. And I've seen this, I feel, I, will back me up on this, we have seen people in this industry, uh, Matt Culley's uh, uh, girlfriend, wife, Vanessa, through the same thing. Matt will gladly talk about that publicly. I've seen liquid makers that have, I've seen people that privately message me that told me, hey, listen, I can't get off this 50 milligram jewel nick. I don't know what to do. So it, 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 it puts us into that other scope of, is vaping now a required dosage thing for your body since it's been trained that way, or is vaping the way that we know it, and, and which is an enjoyable? I love vaping, right? And, and I can enjoy it through the day, and I don't have to be necessarily get my dosage. Phil, I, I mean, I know it's this. This is you know probably going to cause cause a shitstorm, <laughs> but it is what it is. But we had to bring up the answer, and it's, it's just uh, something that we have not thought about. And it's yeah. No, first, no, I agree. First time yeah. I hear it as well, too. Um, back in the day when, uh, what was it, whole, whole tobacco alkaloids? I, yeah, WTAs. WTAs, yeah. absolutely. You know, when, when that was a thing, um, I refused to vape that. And my, my thought was, is why get hooked on something else, right? Yeah. Uh, when these high nick salts came out, uh, first of all, they don't have the throat hit that I absolutely need from my yeah. vape. Uh, that's number one. Number two, I don't like the way they make me feel. And yeah. and again, why get hooked on a higher nicotine strength? Um, 
and, and you know something he because he mentioned something there and this was this was uh kind of interesting because it's something that we've talked about and it's something dr farsalinos uh talked about on the show as well mm-hmm. you know we have jewel but we have all of these other salt nicotines as well right he talked about protocols right how do we know like one salt is being made correctly yeah. and, and another one is not you know how, how because there's no there's no standard defined process to make the nicotine salt as safe as possible do you want to say do you want to call yeah. it that yeah um i don't know but you know you, you make the comment like you know jewel only came out with a 50 if you think about it no other vape company really did that as far as I know, like I, I believe even my blue has some kind of a step down process. Yeah. Right. Um, it, most, makes you, it makes you think about the model of what the goal right. of Jewel was. Was Jewel right. a really come out to like save the smokers or was it to get people to continuously right. buy this product so they can be sold to make tobacco? I mean, right. it, again, it, 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 we're not going to find out 20 years around when all these memos come out and all that stuff. But if you I, I agree that there is something there. Again, I just don't think that it's as harmful as a cigarette because we talk, we talked about nicotine. Nicotine is not the issue. So if you're getting 50 milligram of nicotine or if you're getting three milligram, there this shouldn't be a concern. I'm more concerned about these other receptors and that need that it creates into people. And this is what I'm talking about. It's just like the fiending, right? And we saw what happened as soon as Jewel pulled the flavors. Here comes China to fill that gap. And we see all these puff bars and candy bars now with 50 and 60 milligram nicotine salt in them. And they're selling like crazy to, you know, the people that 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 it fills the gap of Juul. And if Juul is gone, then the next product is going to be there. There's always going to be black market. It's going to be there. But I see these people that desperately need to have that fix, if I want to yeah. call it like that. And to me, as Dimitri, and I think to you as well, Phil, because, you know, we're so alike. I don't want this product to be a necessity. Right. I, I want this product to be enjoyable for people so they can get away from cigarettes. Right. I, I would rather it be a less harmful pleasure yes. than smoking. Very That's what nice. I want it to be. And, and it is nice. for me. It is. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it's not something like I'm waking up in the middle of the night. I got to I got I got to get take my drag. I got to I got to get my fix. It's not that it's not like I'm waking up first thing in the morning. It's like I, I got to get my hand on the electronic cigarette. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's not a necessity to me. It's more of a pleasure, uh, and I you know I do have uh, concerns. I mean, you, you heard it, um, you know, and he said a lot of other stuff that we talk about, like you know, nicotine is nicotine, and you're still going to get that feeling um, of euphoria and that buzz whether yeah. you use freebase or whether you use salt. But he says it opens up more receptors in the brain, so it's doing something else that freebase is not doing. Right. Right. Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, the, the, the whole reason why we brought this up is now, I mean, we, we could go on hours and hours and talking about this, but it's just take just take the information. And as an adult, you can make some do some research and, and make your own conclusion on it. I do know that Juul in Europe is failing. I mean, uh, Juul is not selling in Europe because they have this low content nicotine that the product is not is not substantial. Blue outsells Juul in Europe by far. And Blue uses uh, freebase nicotine in their pod system. And at 20 milligrams in that pod system, it's very, very satisfying. I'm not going to lie to you. So uh, so we see that there is something there. But again, it's not a deterrent, not for you to try it. If salt nicotine is what's keeping you off cigarettes, continue to use it. If you want to suggest that, absolutely suggest that. There's nothing against that. Always keep in the back of, of, of your mind that, you know, I saw a comment from Green Eye Lady that says, I don't trust you. I don't trust Jewel either. I'm sorry. I just don't trust Jewel. I've seen so many bad things within the company, and I've seen a lot of things in the background in political state houses where I fight these laws in Tennessee and stuff like that from the company that obviously I don't trust them a- at all, especially now that they've been acquired by Altria. But there is something there, and I can vouch it because we've seen it with our own uh, two eyes. So, Recap, I hope you enjoyed uh, Dr. Sebastian Uru. I think Uru is the proper way of... of Ooh, yeah, uh, I believe so. Uh, to uh, Just to answer uh, Jan P's question, uh, yeah, I did. When I woke up, I had to have a cigarette. I, I That was the first thing I did was reach for a cigarette in the morning when I was a smoker. 
I I didn't do that. I had to get something in my mouth first before I had a cigarette. I had to get like a coffee. <laughs> I see where you're going. Uh, I had to get like a drink, a coffee, or something. I could not. I can't. I couldn't wake up. I, but sometimes in the middle of the night, I'd wake up and go have a cigarette. Absolutely. But in the morning, I had to have like you know my coffee or something before I lit up that first uh, the first cigarette of the day. Um, but, but it's been so long. Like my pattern, I didn't even remember my pattern. But but uh, but it's, it's uh, you know. It's, it's just something to think about, and it's just more information, and it's going to take more research, and it's going to take more science. And if, if they do update that, we're, we're certainly going to bring it to you. But we do want to thank Alpha Liquid and uh, Gaia Trans for hosting us. And, um, and of course, we want to thank um, Sebastian Aru, a true PhD, unlike our Surgeon Den Gen General, that brought some truth and some answers to the questions that I'm sure all of you have from an independent uh, point of view, because it is an independent view. This is not... Uh, industry funded you know effort of them to put out positive news he's he's truly trying to do true science and, and get the truth out there about vaping and it can help millions of smokers quit smoking you know i i just want to respond to cb's comment here who says it's more efficient it's more efficient i'm not buying that i'm not buying that either yeah. what if it's not C cb i want you to think about it a little bit differently what if it's not more efficient what if it's more addictive or it creates more of a dependency okay what if because they eliminate the throat hit right you're able to vape a higher milligram right which which affects your body quicker right if you were a, if you were able to vape a free base 50 milligram i have a feeling it would make you feel exactly the same way. It would hit your blood exactly the same way. So what if these, re I'm just, I'm not saying it is, I want you to think about it differently, right? What if these receptors that are opening up in your brain are creating more of an addiction, more of a dependency, right? Not necessarily having anything to do with efficiency, right? But the only reason why we talk about efficiency is because the process in which salt is created reduces the inflammation, reduces the throat hit, allowing you to consume a much higher strength nicotine. That's all. I'm just saying, think about it a little bit differently. I, I agree. I agree. What if, what, if it, what, what if it's not more efficient, but instead it's just more addictive yeah. or makes you fiend it, like Dimitri says? Yeah, I, I, I love the comment from, from Arizona Advocate, and she's a, she's a sweetheart. But uh, it, I, it, to me, it's become a pleasure. I don't have to have it. I enjoy trying new flavors, making clothes, etc. I think I think this is what we all have been trying to do for the last ten years. This is why we started making videos on YouTube and trying to help people discover new ways to vape and enjoy it and pleasure and find your happy place and then discover new flavors and discover new ways of building coils. And you know, I, I think that I think that is a huge part of the community. That in the last couple of years, with the introduction of Juul to the U.S. market, we kind of got away from. And I think this is one of the reasons why vape. Well, there's a lot of reasons why vape shops are dying, but that's just another brick in this, you know, wall that's being built around the community as well too. I think it's, I think it takes away the fun from vaping, and I think fun is what keeps you away from cigarettes, but doesn't make you dependent on the product. If that makes sense, okay? I can leave the house without my vaporizer. I can leave my house for a couple hours and not have a vape with me. I can get on the motorcycle and drive for two hours without having to stop and get a vape. I wasn't going to be able to do that when I was smoking cigarettes, right? And I don't want to get into that way uh, as well, too, when we're talking about vaping, because then it becomes a dosage issue. So I'm not going to go. How, how long were you on your motorcycle today? Uh, not today. Yesterday. It was a beautiful day. It was two hours. Two hours? Yeah. I, can, I get so concerned with you on the motorcycle. I, uh, I, I know. There was an accident, too, yesterday uh, on down the please, road that I was. I, I, was, I, I passed through that road. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, yeah, I'm taking my time. Like, I don't know what I would do without you. It's a beautiful day, uh, Christmas I mean, I'm Eve. sure I'd get over it. Yeah, I, but sure there would be right. like 30 seconds there of inconsolable grief. I'm sure. Uh, but the Christmas Eve and yesterday was just beautiful days. And I'm, I mean, I, we're, we're going to be traveling again. So I didn't have much time. So I figured I'd get on the bike. Speaking of traveling... Speaking of traveling, uh, thanks again, Alpha Liquid. We're going back to France, uh, Phil. Believe it too. Imagine that. Uh, December, excuse, December. Uh, January 13th through the 20th is another tour. Uh, we have made these limited edition Zenith Pros, as you see here in the picture. And we're going to be visiting these uh, shops down here. Sega Verte, Point Smoke, Vapor Store, Sigusto, and La Maison de Vapor Tour. Whoa, very good. Like we, we, that? Yeah. You like that? Uh, by the way, Phil, uh, seven stores in eight days and four cities, brother. 
I know, man. It's going to be so much Great. fun. Great. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, yeah, just like, yeah, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be very, very draining. You know, we, we did something like this uh, very, very similar in Greece where and, we visited yeah. several different vape shops in several different towns. Yeah. And Italy, uh, so, too. You know, you know, we're 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 going obviously to 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 promote the zenith, but also to meet with the shops that support us and uh, meet with vapors as well. Yeah. We're excited about that. Uh, you know, I just wished because I I heard that um that silver and rose gold uh, zenith pro is so beautiful is, for is, for ladies. Sick. I think especially uh, it's just too bad. It's too bad. I don't think that one's gonna make it there. I know nope. the black the and black gold one and the gold one will. Is, yeah, is gonna make it there, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we hope to have that silver and rose gold available for the uh, the ladies it's as so sexy. well. But anyway, um, it's another tour and it's going to be fun. I, mean, I get to spend so much time with you. It's just always so much pleasure. So much pleasure for me. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, which which leads us to probably because it's, it's already that's where uh, it goes. That's where I was leading in. We should we should do uh, a quick commercial break for, and hear from one of our sponsors at least, maybe one of our sponsors, and then get some of the fun stuff. And we'll tell you we'll tell you uh, where, where are you, Shannon? Shannon. We're about to tell you how you can win the stocking. Stay tuned. Catchy you know tune, bro, isn't it? I, I have something uh, in common with the Taros. What? I, you change, it, it's replaying. It's replaying the commercial. No, it's not. It's not. Go ahead. Okay. I, I too change color in the sun. <laughs> do, you, do you? Yeah, yes, you I do. do. You do. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. that's a catchy tune, man. It makes me. Uh, it makes me. Uh, makes me want to dance. All right. So you know, uh, it, let me just put a little uh, story behind it. As you know, what we started doing is we started doing some travel vlogs when we. Wait, traveled. wait, 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 wait. No, don't do that one yet. Don't do that. Do do a couple of the uh, the, the interviews. Uh, I, I, oh, this, the outtakes. Yeah, you do do the interview outtakes. But we used you used one of them in the big video too. Yeah, yeah, yeah but th th it's okay. That's okay. Okay. All right. Here, let me do this one first. Here, this this is an outtake from the uh, from the video. So you you as a scientist, you as a as a PhD, what message would you have to smokers? Hold on, we'll, we'll, we'll wait for Dimitri to blow his nose. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Get it all out, Dimitri. Let me know when you're done. <laughs> okay, you good? Yeah, okay. Good? Yeah, okay. Hey, listen, I, I want to tell everybody I was <laughs> sick as a dog on this trip, but I still got work done, okay? And you'll see in the video that we're going to play afterwards, I was dying. I was literally dying. I took every pill and spray in France that I could get my hands on. Nothing worked. I went to Greece sick. I'm still sick, but, but you, here, here's what they don't know. Here's what they don't know. It's every time I travel with you. It's almost every time you're like you're sick. You're sick, and you're you, 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 you're like you're you're begging our hosts to take you to pharmacies, and to, you did the same thing in Italy. You were Sorry. sick. I remember one time in China. You act, you in China. You didn't go to a meeting because you were sick in bed. Yes. You, you like really like drink some orange drink drink some orange juice <laughs> vitamin something something because I work so hard and I never rest. Here's another that's one. Your here, quick, quick, quick. That's, your, that's your problem. That's your problem. Scientist, no downtime. PhD. Is there anything that you have that can cure Dimitri? Yeah, yeah that can help him. You go back in the lab. They can feel. 
So obviously they didn't have anything that could cure me. <laughs> it's just I'm just gonna put that out there. But but uh, but anyway. So as you know, me and Phil, we do we, we started doing these travel. We just figured it was fun. You know, it shouldn't have to be vaping all the time. So we're doing these little travel vlogs. We're uploading them to Phil's YouTube channel. And what we did is that we, we now that we, every time that we travel, I think it's since the last two, three trips, we have a camera that's constantly on us. So we put a camera inside the car and we just film as, as we're driving along and we have conversations. Sometimes there's some really good stuff. Sometimes there's some really funny stuff. The majority of the time, we can't play it back for you because it gets into conversations that are just too deep for YouTube. <laughs> uh, but but in this instance, we what we did is well, what Phil did is uh, is he took the footage of us driving from the airport where we had to go to Strasbourg, which was about a four hour drive. It was a long, long drive. And I'm sick. I mean, I'm sick as a dog. But anyway, he took uh, some uh, footage from there. Some of the funny parts uh, so you guys can have an enjoyable video. Right. Am I right, Phil? Yeah. Crank up the volume a little bit there, pal. OK, buddy. You got <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, you can suck me. Oh, you can suck me. Oh, you can suck me. Phil Busardo. This is a nice little ride. Yeah, I rented one of these in Greece last year. Yeah? You should rent one and buy one in Greece. Get rid of that Yaris. I had, I don't know what I, okay. what I ate, but I mean, I had some stinky fart. I still do. If I cut some cheese right now, I'm telling you it's going to smell. I'm just warning you. It's gonna be really bad, but on the plane, I got in the bathroom and I was peeing and I farted and I couldn't stand it. And it came from me. Like I literally had to leave the bathroom. There's really no way to run away from that. Too. <laughs> yeah, you know the where, nowhere, nowhere to go. Big, yeah. And I have a question, like when you're checking in for the flights and it says, uh, will you be traveling with any infants? Do you ever think about me? When... I think about it all the time. You do, I think right? you should have three options. Yeah. It should be yes, no, pupusardo. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, by the way, I just want to let you know, I didn't post anything, okay. right? I didn't say anything to your wife, okay. but I went to inspect the bathroom at the House of Florida the last time you stayed there. Was it bad? Right? I, I don't know how... I like, get water. Everywhere. What you possibly do in that sink. <laughs> it's like, I, 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 like, it's almost like, like you splash her out. Like... Do you, do you shower in the sink or do you shower in the shower? But that wasn't the worst of it. Okay. That wasn't the worst of it. I peeked at the toilet bowl. Yeah. And it wasn't bad. Okay. But then I lifted the seat. Uh-huh. It was like a fucking horror movie, man. Really? Oh, my God. It was so like, I, I was like, I... I have paid attention. I got to get the hazmat suit. I'm going in. <laughs> I'm going in. Yeah, you are not the friend of a bathroom. I'm not, I'm just, I, 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 everybody has their own personality. Yeah, yeah, You're really very totally tidy good. and you always clean up after yourself. I, 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 I've, yeah. never, I've never, I've never, I've yeah. always been like, you know, it was my mom, it was my girlfriend, my wife, you know, it's always been, you know, I've always had somebody that, and that's not my up after you? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I admit it though. I'm a man enough to admit it. Yeah. I'm good at other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Hey, we all have our strong points, right. you know, but that, that, well, that's how I am. Like at the hotel, like everything's got to be organized. Right. Like I, my clothes got to nope. be certain. Not me. I, I just fucking just you. throw everything wherever I go. And I know that. I know that because like when we first uh, when we first started going out <laughs> at the beginning of our relationship. at the beginning of our relationship, when uh, we used to go to the hotels, we used to stay together all the time. Stay to think, we, that's when we like yeah, we stay together all the time. And like you know, you think you would be like a little bit considerate with like my spatial needs? No. No. Just, like, yeah, you would take everywhere. up everything. You would take up the entire desk. You yeah. take up like well, every time, everywhere there was a flat surface. It was covered. It was covered with your shit. Yeah, it's true. And like I had nothing. I'm sorry. It's all right. Look, look. See, this is this is what I mean. Look, look at all the crumbs <laughs> on his seat. Look at all the crumbs. By the way, that's unfair because I was in the gas station paying for gas when you filmed this. Okay, it's probably that's <laughs> completely. It's totally that's, fair. That's, <laughs> all that big mess over there look there's all kinds of snot rags and disease infested stuff there i don't know where those crumbs came from he's a disaster he's a complete disaster uh, are we gonna stop for gas at all or, or are you, are you you just gonna try to make it all right is there a range i'm going that? to uh risk it oh what <laughs> i'm gonna risk it yeah. I'm feeling risque today. Good. All right. Well, you know what? When you're walking <laughs> to the gas station, I'm going to sit in the car. <laughs> a okay. You, so you got to get gas. 
I mean, if it's got a lot of downhills, I think we can make it. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, Jesus Christ. I love how, like, I buy clothing now so that I don't get picked on by you. That's how I buy my, I, like, I look at it, I'm like, what would Dimitri say? <laughs> you know, I can it's actually see up. you do it. So right messed up. I actually can see yeah. you going to a store and yeah. making a decision on what I am going to think of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My front pocket, the big one. I got those pills that you gave me on the inside pocket. Can you get a two manager out of my? Uh, oh manager? my god! <laughs> Fuck, I'm dying. These them little pink pills. Yeah. Okay. Two of them. Okay. There you go. Fuck me. Here we go. Watch you again. Oh my god, I'm gonna get... I'm gonna be sick for Christmas because of you. You know, I should've wore a hazmat suit. Oh my god. Oh. As a scientist and a PhD, is there anything that you have that can cure Dimitri? Yeah, anything that can help him. You go back in the lab and can feel me. Right? <laughs> So good. That it's that's so good. the. I, I don't know what's funnier, like you you dying next to me, or like my reaction to you dying. I'm literally <laughs> dying. People don't understand how yeah. sick. Yeah. <laughs> how sick I was, man. I, I I don't know. I think I I think I got bronchitis. I don't know what I have, but it, but I still it's still lingering around. But um, this, this, this is what I deal with, folks. You got to make your mic louder. I hear uh, everything I'm sounds sorry. very low. Sorry, I, I was I always just backed off from it. But anyway, um, Bob, you should you should feel very you should feel very very bad for me. You should. <laughs> I was I was yeah I know. I know if but... the French if the French team is watching this right now, like start loading up on vitamin C, like, <laughs> vitamin C and antibiotics as soon as you can, as soon as you can. Oh, man, I felt so <laughs> bad, but I worked through it. I was a champion. I drove you there. We didn't run out of gas. I got you fed. I got you drinks. I got you to the location. By the way, the most weird thing ever, by folks, I, 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 I we should have shot some video there. I felt a little uncomfortable with the whole situation. They had booked an Airbnb for us. So I told Phil, this is a nice Airbnb. It's got a, uh, in, an indoor pool. It's an old French villa, whatever. Because not, not because we're special, but the location was literally a village in France. It didn't even have hotels. The closest hotel was like 20 miles away. Yeah. So, so I tell Phil, uh, we, we're going to stay at this Airbnb. So I call the girl that made the booking for us. And I said, is the person going to meet us there to open up the Airbnb? She's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll tell her I'm going to call her right now. So I'm expecting we're gonna get to this Airbnb and somebody's gonna come, open up, give us the keys, and we're gonna go inside and we're gonna we're gonna sleep. No, folks, the people that owned the Airbnb lived in the Airbnb with us, and it wasn't just them. It wasn't just the husband and wife. They had two little kids too. I think a six-year-old and an eight-year-old, literally just running around the house. And you know they laid down the rules. You know this is uh, you know this side here is our side, and this side of the house is your side. Uh, thankfully, the you know the rooms are fine, the bathrooms, everything was fine, everything was nice. But it was really weird getting up in the morning, and you know they would make breakfast for us, and they're literally in the table next to us with their kids having breakfast and getting them ready for school. It was the most weird thing. I don't know. It was, I, it, I mean, it was fine, but it was still a bit uncomfortable. You know, it was uncomfortable for us, but like I'm thinking for them too. Could you imagine having like complete and total strangers? living in your house with your kids there too yeah yeah i mean was... like especially you with that weird greek accent that you have <laughs> they were probably weird. scared for their lives these poor people i don't know buddy so I don't bad know. for them it was it was really really <laughs> weird, weird, weird but uh, another adventure and and hopefully we made you laugh a little bit with uh with those outtakes and this happens guys i'm telling you this was not set up or anything this is just a camera fil filming constantly for four hours in the, in the car so there's a lot of footage there maybe when we retire from vaping We'll be able to play some of these videos for you back where we talk about some of the sensitive stuff. Uh, maybe, the, uh, and, and, maybe the maybe the book should actually be a video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe when we retire from vaping, you'll be able to see some of that stuff because a lot of it has to be cut out. But 
We hope you enjoyed and got a little glimpse into the vape bromance uh, travel vlog style. But now the big news, uh, Phil. Everybody's been waiting for these news. Hold Everybody's on. been waiting for these news. Reggie is making an appearance back there. All right. So the the big uh, stocking giveaway of, of 2019 over here on tasteyourjuice.com. You see the stocking right over here? If you click that stocking, it'll explain the contest. It'll explain why I do the contest. I uh, get a nice little stocking image here. And you will see everything that is currently in the stocking. And, folks, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, and you can really, really <laughs> stepped up. Uh, there's pretty much every device from Inikin, uh current and stuff, some stuff that you can't even buy. Uh, a lot of stuff in here from Joytech. Uh, Five Pawns and Lunar Rover both stepped up. Uh, they are going to give you their entire uh, line of e-liquid in a nicotine strength of your choice. So thank you to Five Pawns, Lunar Rover, Joytech, Inikin. Uh, there's some other stuff in here from UD, Enovop, Pioneer from you, Dovepo, Vupu, Usana bro. Tesla SIGs, my V Pro Home Tech, Asmodus, H Cigar, my V Pro V God, even Smoke is in there. And I don't call them Smock. I call them Smoke because they've always been Smoke Tech to me. All right. So how are you going to win it? How are you going to win everything in this stocking? Uh, here's how we're going to do it. Uh, and, and thank you, Dimitri, for coming up with this. I think I thought that was a really good idea. I wake up every morning asking myself, how can I make your life I easier? I, I know. I know. So I'm going to go to the page right now, uh, and I'm going to go look at my American Airlines account. Uh, and I'm going to go to my account. And what I'm going to do here, all right, I'm going to click this. and I'm going to go down here to the number of miles that I have traveled this year in uh, 2019. All right. And if you and okay, so here's the rules, right? Number one, you can only put one entry in only one entry. Any duplicate entries are going to be removed. That's number one. Number two, you have to be a subscriber to my YouTube channel. I will check. OK, number three, it's open to anybody in a, anybody anywhere in the world. It's going to cost me a fortune to ship this uh, if I do have to ship it out of the U.S. Uh, but you guys are worth it. And I appreciate you guys. Uh, supporting us, supporting our products, and supporting the Smoker Show and being a part of all this. Um, and what you have to do is guess, without going over, how many miles I have traveled in 2019. That's what you got to do, okay? So how many miles have I traveled total in 2019 in an email? Here we go. Here's the important part. Don't get this part wrong. In an email addressed to contest at tasteyourjuice.com in the subject line. Oh, you even have that ready. Well, Look I at you, Dimitri. All prepared today. All Look prepared. You, Dimitri Agrafiotis. In an email addressed to right there, contest at tasteyourjuice.com in the subject line of that email, you are going to put your first name, your last name, dash the number of miles that I have traveled in 2019 uh, as close as you can get without going over, whoever gets closest will win the entire contents of the stocking. Now, uh, I'm announcing it here in this video. I am also going to post this on um, my Facebook. I'm going to post this in the platform uh, group, and I am going to post this on tasteyourjuice.com. You, you should do a video on your, uh, uh, an individual video on your YouTube as well, too. You got time. You should do that as well, too. Yeah, I probably should be. A yeah. matter of fact, I might even just uh, review uh, that tank that I was yeah, using. Yeah, the 90 uh, And by the way, I can give a hint. I think this this will help people uh, a little bit, okay? Uh, just for the Smoker Show. Well, maybe you can give the hint as well, too. But uh, because because there is a, such a wide range. Uh, okay. But here's the hint. Pay attention. Pay attention, everybody. Uh, Phil made Executive Platinum this year. That's so there's hint. your hint. There's your hint. God, I thought about this so much the entire day. I thought it was such a great hint. Feel me. I, 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 so that I gives you a range. It gives you a range. It, it gives you a minimum. Platinum. It gives you a minimum. Yep. Feel me. Executive platinum this year. Right. And I made it by the the scare God, of the, the, the hairs of my chinny chin chin. Two years not, in a row, though. Miles, Two years in a row, baby. Let's go. So there you go. Uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at the number of miles right now. If you can guess the number of miles. As closest without going over, you will win everything in that stocking. Again, I'm going to post it everywhere so that you guys will know. Now, when are we going to shut it down? What do you What do you think, Dimitri? When are we? We should probably shut it. The, I'll let it run 10. until after we get back from Paris. How about that? That long? Yeah. Why not? Because we get back the 22nd, uh, if I'm not mistaken. 
No. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, we do. So I would wow. say I would say the tenth of January is fine. 10th the tenth of January. Yeah, that gives them thirteen days. Okay. All right. Well, and then we announce it when we get back from Paris. That's fine. Okay. So there you go. You have until uh, it's, this is like the Dimitri contest now this year. It's okay. Uh, so that's what you have. You have until the, uh, the 10th of January at 1159 PM Eastern standard time to get your entries into contest at tasteyourjuice.com and the subject line of the email, your first name, your last name, your mileage guess. Yes. Good luck, everybody. Man, I'm so excited to see what people are going to guess. I'm so excited to see what people so are going to guess. It is so exciting. And it's a great prize. So congratulations to everybody. Hopefully, whoever wins it will be able to pass some of that gear out to smokers and, and, uh, and maybe become you know, your own little uh, um, cessation clinic wherever you are and try to help people quit smoking. I think it's a great thing. It's an amazing thing. Or you can just sell it and you know, make money, I guess, whatever. You can do whatever you want to. It's, it's yours anyway. So it doesn't make any difference. All right. Uh, Reggie, oh, he misses me so much. Look at he's looking at me right now. Reggie, Reggie boy. Look at Dimitri. Oh, Reggie boy, I miss you so much, buddy. One more time, we want to remind you if you are in France, come and check out one of these vape stores during our tour from January the 13th through the 20th. Seven stores, four cities in eight days. We are going to be visiting various stores in Paris and Lille and uh, uh, what's the other one? Champigny, I think it's called Champigny. Uh, so very, very excited. Tours, I Italy, we'll be there. Come and uh, hang out with us. We we're always very, very excited to meet with vapors and, uh, and talk to you. We didn't really do a recap for 2019, but I will tell you this was a rough year. In my 10 years uh, of vaping uh, field, this was the roughest year that our industry had from various, uh, from various attacks. But... But what and, I and make make no lie, make, make no mistake, guys. Uh, when you say attack, uh, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. It is definitely a coordinated attack against vaping. Coordinated, right? But right. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna take the positive from 2019. I saw people come together. I saw movements happen. I saw rallies happen. Uh, even if it's a small amount of people, it doesn't make any difference. It shows that people are passionate. So I'm gonna take the good from 2019. That with all this bad that we had, all these bad attacks and businesses closing and vape shops going out of business and all that we do we're still here we're still here look at how many what other industry will tell you has gone through what we have gone to in the last year and they're still standing and we're still here standing there's still vape shops out there that are helping people convert smokers there's still a lot of people that care about vaping and tobacco harm reduction there's people out there making moves and trying to do the right thing whether it's going to be in their local municipality in their state or in a federal level or even worldwide so i'm gonna take the positive from 2019 and take that with me into 2020 uh as far as recapping uh, the the vaping situation phil about you anything that you want to say i've said it all somebody asked me what kind of cap uh reggie is he's a persian he's a pussy cat <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, we're you know we're, we're not going anywhere. Our, our resolve is strong. It does it, it gets us down at times, as you can imagine. We've had our ups and downs, uh, you know, this year. Um, we're, I mean, we're just mostly concerned about people who just don't want to smoke anymore. Uh, and I and I think now, especially especially now, like when I think about um, oh God, what's her name? C C C CJ, the, the older woman in Chattanooga, uh, Choo Choo Granny. Jeannie, Jeannie, CJ Cox. Jeannie, yeah, Jeannie. When, when I think about people like that or people, you know, like that can't get their flavors anymore. Yeah. What's going on? Come on, yeah, man. You know, to, to, uh, adults, adults who have no idea what's going on. Someday they go into their vape shop and they're like, sorry, you can't have your favorite flavor anymore. You know, you, you got to use that over there. Yeah. That's just, it's just so wrong. It's so wrong on so many different levels. I agree. Um, and, and it's really sad that, you know, that people are going to have to go through that, uh, that people are going to have to deal with that. It's wrong that, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good vape shops out there that, that have done things for, for the right reasons. And, and they've done things the right way that are feeling this, um, you know, and, and I think about this more and more, and, and I truly believe that Dimitri is on to something uh, and something that should have been done a long time ago. And I wrote a, I wrote an article in PGVG magazine, too, that kind of goes uh, along with this. Guys, if all the vape bans go away, if if PMTA gets really, really easy for, you know, uh, for vapor products to go through, if, if everything 
all of a sudden just smells like roses for vaping. <clears throat> Public confidence is so low when it comes to vaping right now. It's, it's terrible. People truly believe that vaping is going to kill you far faster, much faster than a cigarette, right? So even if, if everything is better, if we don't have people, if we don't have the public, if we don't have confidence in vaping and what we do, if we don't have new customers going into vape shops, right, the bans going away aren't going to help. Absolutely. The PMTA going away isn't going to help. We need, we need positive PR. We need the truth about vaping. We need positive studies in mainstream media the same way the same way that all of this negative stuff is out there, right? We need positive stuff. We need people to hear the truth about what it is that we're doing. Yeah. They need to understand that vaping is at least 95% safer than smoking. Yeah. Okay? Even, even if it's just one person at a time, you as a vapor take 10, 15 minutes out of your time to try to change one opinion. That's just one more person that's going to learn the truth and can do some research and understand what vaping is all about. So even if it's up to you uh, as a consumer or it's walking down the street, talk to somebody about vaping. I think that we can change a lot of minds. Yep. All right. For 2020, uh, Phil, uh, you know, it's been a great year. Uh, we, we've spent a lot of time together once again. Uh, I, I couldn't have asked for a better person to to spend uh, this journey and vaping and in life at this point because we are uh we're more friends than that we are vaping partners i think at this point so i appreciate you and everything that you do and all the hard work that you put into editing these videos uh and and everything else that you do and uh i wish for you and for everybody that's watching in 2020 love uh prosperity happiness laughter uh but most of all health because without health you know it and I know it. We have absolutely nothing. Well, uh, you know, I'll say the same thing about you, my friend. I've got the, a lot of respect for you and, you know, the work that you've done uh, in the world of advocacy. I, I can't do it. I don't have the temperament for it. I don't have the patience for it. Uh, maybe, <laughs> yeah, I lost mine today, didn't I? My, uh, my <laughs> blood pressure certainly can't handle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I know you, you do a lot uh, when it comes to advocacy, when it comes to fighting for this product. I know you take a, a lot of time away from your family. Uh, to go and fight for it, you know, and, 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 you know, not just you, but uh, all of the other advocates out there, sure. because the advocates that are still advocating, the advocates that are still out there fighting for you with everything that's going on, I give them a lot of credit. Guys, yeah. I give them a lot of credit. I give them a lot of credit uh, for, you know, in, in the face of the constant negativity to just keep fighting and keep pushing yeah. uh, for our rights uh, to vape. Uh, so I, I give all of the advocates out there, you know, tons and tons of credit. Um, and I, I could not ask for a, a better person to, to go on this ride uh, with me over the years. Uh, you've been a friend. You've been a companion. When I've been down, you've lifted me up. Hopefully, I've done the same for you. And let's continue to do the same thing in 2020. Uh, and we will have the longest running bromance in the history. And the only true bromance in vaping, for sure. A lot of people try to copy it, but a lot of people just can't. Cock a doodle day! Can't get cockadoodle dam out of it. It's just us. No, no cockadoodle dam. No cockadoodle dam. All right, folks. We hope you enjoyed the episode. <clears throat> uh, I don't know when we're gonna be back again. When are we gonna be back? Are we gonna make a, a do an episode before we leave for France? I I don't know. We'll 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 announce it uh, short term. You know, there's so many things that Dimitri and I want to do. We want to do the Smoker Show every other Tuesday. We want to do in the Tuesday that we're not doing the Smoker Show. We want to have these dueling reviews that we've talked about. Uh, just to get some more product on camera and talk about some more product, especially, you know, with my schedule, it's very, very difficult for me to do full blown reviews now. Um, but, you know, to do something like that. And every time we, we start talking about this and every time we, we, we're, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. It's like, uh, no, you got to go here and you got to go here and you got to go there. So, you know, the, the travel makes it very, very difficult. But, uh, you know, we, we do what we can. And, and I forgot to thank all, all the people that watch the show, all the people that watch the show, that talk about the show. Uh, that I consider friends and not fans. Uh, thank you guys for, for coming along uh, with us on this crazy ride that we call vaping all these years. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and I'm just uh, honored to have all of you guys uh, watching us. So all of my best to you guys in uh, 2020. Wishing you a lot of ha happiness and health and prosperity, and a happy new year, everybody. Awesome. By the way, you know, um, just just briefly... Um, from now until 
May, all right, from now until May. We're going to France, Las Vegas, New York, France again, Germany, Italy, London, China, <laughs> from now until the end of May. You actually forgot one. Which one? Canada. In Canada. Yeah, in Canada. So it's 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 not glamorous. Trust me. It's, it, I mean, look what Phil has to get through in the car before. I that, that's what I'm dealing with, guys. I'm Don't I'm think going. that it's all glamour. But we appreciate you. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you on the next episode.